Hello, everyone. Let's see. I think the volume is all right. And I can hear myself, and I can't hear you, which is probably for the best. I mean, I love you all, but it would be tremendously d d distracting to have like a hundred voices in my head when I'm trying to play a video game. <clears throat> ah. My roommate has graciously agreed to provide me a cup of chamomile tea to help my throat. Because, yeah, good lord, Robert's voice is like I, I picked one that was tough to do and maintain. Which, you know, it's my own fault, but uh, that is such as it is. How's everybody doing? Oh yeah, it's Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. <sighs> okay, so I think people have had time enough to show up. <laughs> to find out that this, this, this thing is happening. So let's see if we can actually get this thing to show the gameplay footage. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. I don't know what it is about Streamlabs that is really slow to realize that a, a full screen thing is happening. Welcome, you've got dads. <laughs> I do like the America Online reference there. <laughs> like it's it's appropriately ancient. Hockey day. What were we doing? Right, we were doing Robert, <laughs> quite literally. Uh, but first, we have a little bit of a distraction, a little side quest, I suppose. Hey, it's guy, and what are your feelings about poker? Beyond hardly knowing her. Poker? I hardly know her. Damn it! <laughs> there it is. Well, good talk. Wait, I actually like poker. I just saw the joke and I had to take the shot. Please, Matt, I'm a dad. I'm contractually obligated. No, no, I get that. Anyway, we've been playing weekly poker games and I figure I should send an invite your way. Sounds great. I love losing money. Cool, dude. See you soon. Okay, we have a poker opportunity here. Great, that's a game I'm good at. No, it's not. Ugh, let's warm up with that, and then we'll get into dealing with Robert and whatever the hell is up with him. Seems to be quite a lot, in fact. Oh, wait, hang on. I can't see the chat properly. Let me just get the chat in a place where I can see it. Uh, a little too much. There we go. That should do the trick. And make my microphone go a little lower so it doesn't block my view. Yay. Matt invited me to a poker night at Joseph's house. Oh no, I put on my going out coat and walk over. I hope I also put on pants. Across the way, I spot Matt, who's walking from his own house. He's got a case of beer under his arm. Ah, oh, crap, I should have brought something. Oh. Hey, man. Crap, I should have brought something. <laughs> no worries, man. It's your first time. Just bring a full wallet. How long have you guys been at this for? Years, buddy. Just a nice way to keep in touch with the guys. They're really high stakes. I didn't really want to do the Theo voice for him because I kept confusing it for Craig who was like Waymo bro, and I couldn't really do the laid back surfer bro thing at the same time. So we'll do something else for Matt at the moment. We pass through the fence enclosing Joseph's backyard. Craig, Brian, and Joseph hover around the patio, drinking beer and chatting. Robert sits in the corner, brooding as usual. Yeah, he does do that a lot. <laughs> Sky, I'm glad you could make it. Oh. So am I. I'm psyched to take all your money, bro. You should cover the Just let it brew for a bit. Mm. Just like old times. Craig's the res... <clears throat> I need to remember some voices here. Um, Craig's the resident shark. Uh, 
I prefer the term person who's good at poker. I'm well aware Craig's always been suspiciously good at poker. You're still as terrible as you were in college. Poker face. Yeah. <laughs> I am still terrible at poker. My tell is a sustained childlike giggle. <laughs> There's no way you're as bad as Joseph. Joseph shrugs. This is basically my tithing. Giving back to the community. Hmm. <laughs> Plus, I'm happy to just sit here and eat all of Brian's snacks. Oh. Guess who brought picks in a blanket? Yeah, God damn it! I've forgotten all the voices again. I don't know how I do it every time. Every time. Like, it's not even been 24 hours. Not Craig. Huh? Hey, my chai and granola energy balls are just as delicious. <laughs> Everybody laughs, indeed. Let's just get the game going. Uh. Oh, hey, the chat stopped. There we go. We all take a seat at the table and Matt starts dealing cards. The first couple rounds go by easily as I'm getting the hang of things, but it's obvious that Craig is running the show here. Craig, how did you get so good at this? It's pretty easy. You just start getting a feel for everybody's tell. Like, Matt will scratch his ear. Hey. Brian adjusts his pants when he's trying to lie. Now, wait a second. I think you just loudly nods the whole room when you have a good hand. Yeah, yeah, that's me. What's Joseph's tell? Everything. Literally everything. That man is an open book. He couldn't lie if he tried. Well, at least I have God on my side. Hmm. See, you can't even say that with a straight face. I've lost the voices a little bit. What about Robert? Honestly, the man is an enigma. Robert raises his glass of whiskey to us in a solemn salute. I think he'd wipe the floor with us if he actually tried. Mm -hmm. I'm just here because I enjoy the company. <laughs> Robert pulls out his phone and stares at it. Mm -hmm. Robert, is that a flip phone? Oh. Yeah. Excellent. What are you? <clears throat> what are you, drug dealer now? I. Yeah. What do you need? Horse, speed, Tijuana Johnnies. Mm. I can get you the street stuff easy, but if you're looking for something exotic or designer, that's maybe 20, 72 hours and a favor called. Maybe I won't need you today. Maybe I won't need it tomorrow, but someday. Oh, I, I don't really. I, I think I'm good. Right. Hey. But still, if you got the coin, I got the goods. I drop my phone in the toilet and this is a backup until I can get it replaced under warranty. Everyone murmurs their sympathies. We've all been there. We go back to playing. I really got stuck gotta stop eating these pigs in the blanket. Pigs in the blanket? Pigs in blankets. I don't know. But they're very good. I think there might be cheese in them. Oh. Ugh, I don't know if I got enough to race you on you this round. You can always bet your firstborn. If you think you can handle another one, be my guest. Bright and Hazel are a handful, to say the least. Buddy, you think... Buddy, you think... They're... <laughs> what the hell was Joseph's voice? Buddy, you think three kids is a handful? Try four. I'm operating at 100% dad capacity at all times. Oh. Actually, it's technically five. Christine saw a commercial for one of those dolls that poop and wouldn't stop asking for it. We ended up getting it for her for her birthday, but she's so grossed up by the fake baby poop, she makes me change its diapers. So now I'm changing the real baby and the fake baby. Hey. There's just a lot of poop in my household right now. Daisy got one of those. Ah, I think because Brian was more boisterous, and Joseph was sort of more laid back, annoying church pastor. Oh, <clears throat> and I think it, I did a thing where I contracted my diaphragm for him, like to deepen the voice. Daisy's got one of those a while back. Yeah, that was more like it. One night I walk in on her after she's tried to take the doll apart to see how the poop mechanism worked, but then she couldn't put it back together and started crying. Poop everywhere. Fake poop, but still. That reminds me of, wait, do we all have poop doll stories? Everyone nods in agreement. Mm. Guys, I really don't need more poop in my life than there is already. Can we just get back to poker and not talk about uh, poker? Poker, and not talk about poop? Hmm. Matt deals another hand, and we click, click quickly for about, get about the poop. We run out of pigs and blankets, so we switch over to Craig's healthy snack food. Yeah, it actually isn't terrible. Yeah, yeah. Those kale chips are phenomenal. We should sell these at the coffee shop. Oh. It's my own recipe. I'd be happy to give it to you guys. Oh. I can see it now. Pierce the kale. Chips. Hmm. Oh. Is the veil is a popular post-hardcore screamo band out of San Diego. Well, we all look at Matt confused. Uh, it's, uh, it's maybe not any of your wheelhouses. Hey. How's the shop nowadays? Hey. Yeah. 
Yeah, I need to do the diaphragm thing, otherwise I can't get Brian's voice out. Busy as ever. I'm toying with the idea of hiring on another person to work the counter, but I haven't found a good candidate. Hmm. Hey. If is looking for a summer gig, let me know. That's really nice of you, but I think she's been burned too badly by coffee shops before. Uh, literally, not figuratively. Hey. Matt cocks his head to the side. I'll ask her, though. We get down to the final hand of the night, and it's Craig in the lead by a landslide. Joseph has long since lost all his chips and is taken to tidying up, refusing any help from the rest of us. Brian deals us all cards. Uh. What's it gonna take for... <clears throat> What's it gonna take for Robert to give a damn on this round? Yeah, deeper. Robert looks up from his half empty glass of whiskey. Do you really want to unleash the beast? Mm -hmm. Well, now I'm curious. I got a long history of being a gambling man, but I'll only do it if you make it interesting. None of this penny chip nonsense. I got a lettuce 18-year single blind sitting in my closet right now. Was serving it from when River turns 21, but I'm willing to put it up as collateral. Ah. Now you're talking my language. He throws the keys to his truck on the table. Mm. She's seen better days, but she can still pull a tree trunk out of the ground. Nope. <laughs> Myself and everyone else at the table immediately folds. Tell the cards, bry guy. Mm. Are you guys sure you want to... Mm. You heard the man. Deal. I... Brian deals the next round of cards. Craig stares daggers at Robert, who casually sips his whiskey. So I know what you might be thinking. Robert put his old workhorse up for grabs. His only mode of transportation. At times in his life, his only home. How could he be so sure of his abilities in gambling? I'll tell you right now, Craig. Mm. I wasn't always like this. Oh. I was a lot like you. Smart, talented, cocksure of my own good luck. Great biceps. But it didn't last long, though. I lost everything in a game of Pai Gao in the back, of, back room of a Shenzhen tea house on what I thought was a three-day business trip. Everything gone. Clothes, money, identification, you name it. <sighs> I woke up in a ditch near Xiaowei Park and had to make a new life from there. It took me three years to beg, borrow, and steal my way back to American soil. In those three years, I saw the greatest depths of human fear. Loved deeper than I ever had, and I lost it all. Many t more times over. I don't know. I've seen my own death, Craig. I know how to die. It's not like this. Hey. So let's make this more interesting. Dude. Robert produces the deed to his house from his jacket and tosses it on the table. Hey. All I have and all I am. Are you prepared to go the distance? Oh. Craig wipes the sweat from his brow. He studies Robert's face intently, searching for any sort of or tell, any sort of tell that he can find. I think there's a typo. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Motorbike Man. I enjoy it when you drive by my window loudly. That's... Th thank you. Robert casually sips his whiskey again. I... Uh, I... I fold. Hey. Everyone erupts. Oh. Fine, fine. The whiskey is yours. And that's why you don't dance with the devil. So what was it? Were you bluffing or did you have the cards? That's for me to take to my grave, fellas. Hey. Next week, boys. Hey. Next week. Hey. You got it. Hey. I'll be there. Mm -hmm. This has been a very relaxing, and I sincerely doubt I will wake up in a cold sweat thinking about it tonight. <laughs> Keep working on that poker face, guy. Yeah. Deeper for him, and then we can go a little higher for Joseph and make him a little bit more reedy. Welcome. You've got dads. Indeed. Well, that was a good warm-up of me, you know, vaguely remembering the voices I'd given these characters. I've I've played them for like six hours now. I should know. I should know at this point. Ugh, how's everybody doing in chat? I think my tea is starting to get ready. Which is good, because if I'm going to be doing Robert's voice... Uh, my throat will not thank me. Whew. <laughs> da 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 Oh, tea. Delicious, delicious tea. Save me from myself. You know, I could have just read all of them with my normal voice. I could have just... I could have just not... Not done any of this, but no! I had to go and be creative. Now I know what the don't hug me, I'm scared people were talking about. Ah. Uh. Hot tea. 
What did I eat today? Uh, some rye bread and some salads and uh, some ham. A little bit of cheese, some nice brie. Okay, where were we? Right, Robert. Let's save. Make sure we have super definitely for absolutely sure saved. And then I think it's the third date with Robert now, which means things are about to get serious and my voice is about to get hurt. <laughs> oh, I should have saved him for last. I haven't spoken to Robert since that night we drove out to his thinking spot. He seemed unusually sober then, like more so than the usual amount of somber that Robert... Yeah, he seemed unusually somber then, rather, that Robert is, which is already a lot. I've been thinking about him, and I hope he's doing okay, but I've been a little reluctant to reach out to him. Skyen. Hey, Skyen. Guess who's getting their drink on tonight? I take a look at my dad book messages. There's a flurry of them from Robert. Yes, it's you. Also me, but mostly you. <clears throat> sure, why not? <laughs> Robert, buddy, tonight we ride. Yes. Meet me at Jim and Kim's, 8 p.m. Not that I'm unappreciative, but I think this is the first time that Robert's given more than an hour's warning before hanging out. Amanda? Amanda pops her head into the hallway. Music I don't recognize blaring from her room. What's up? I'm hanging out with Robert later tonight. Okay, cool. Robert, who is my friend. I have friends. I'm happy for you, Dad. People enjoy my company, Amanda. Aww. Dad, I'm so happy for your continued development as a human being. What are you listening to? Sad shit. <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm kind of tempted to, I don't give a fuck anymore. But, I, I have no choice but to dad. Sad stuff, sweetie. Aww. Holy stuff. Holy stuff, lay off me, pops. Amanda goes back into her room and turns up the volume of her, to her sad stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I put on my going out coat and walk over to Jim and Kim's. I spot Robert leaning against the brick wall smoking a cigarette. As I get closer, I realize that he looks a little... Different. Cleaner, I guess. It actually seems like he combed his hair and his clothes are less wrinkled than usual. Hey. Hey. You take a shower just for me? I'm working on my relationship with existence. We both stand there for a second and don't say anything. Robert finishes a cigarette and abruptly goes inside. I follow him. By the time I get inside, Robert's already at the bar ordering two whiskeys. I spot a booth in the back and claim it for us. Robert slides in and hands me a glass to toast. A toast to toast. Love you, warm bread. Yeah, that's the exactly the kind of awkward nonsense I do. We clink whiskeys and I watch him sip his, rather than tradi his a traditional approach of slamming the whiskey back as quickly as possible. So what's the plan for tonight? Hit some other bars, maybe grab some pizza. I think that'll kill some time before we go burn down that old abandoned house in the woods. It's definitely not as fun if it's abandoned. Mary pops over the back of the booth, a glass of wine in her hand. She punches Robert in the shoulder. Where was my phone call? Sorry, figured you were busy sinking your teeth into some poor sap. I am, he's right here. I look around the booth to see a guy sitting across from her. He waves meekly. You're replacing me with a new kid? Mary, I could never replace you, whether I wanted to or not. Mary leaves her booth and slides in next to Robert. The guy she was sitting with looks mildly relieved. She eyes Robert's clean-pressed clothes up and down, suspiciously. What, you got a court date coming up? Courts offered me impunity if I would testify against them. I'm considering it. Seriously though, what's up with you? Robert stares down in his drink, suddenly looking serious. It's... Pappy. Doctors say it's cirrhosis of the liver. I told that old bag of bones to quit it with a sauce, but it's all he ever is ever known, especially since Ma's gone. That's why I invited you out tonight. Just didn't want to be alone. Oh, come on. Sky, and don't be an asshole. You know, the one thing Robert doesn't joke around about, it is Pappy. Oops. They're giving him two months. I gotta help him straighten out his affairs. 
Robert, I'm so sorry. Robert takes a long look at his whiskey, eyeing it in the dim glow of the bar's lights. I look at his life, then I look at mine, and I know history's just doomed to repeat itself. Oh my god. That's <laughs> just kidding. He's retired with his new girlfriend in Acapulco. They watch the sunset every night. Probably screw like donkeys. Hey, wait, aren't rabbits the ones who screw a lot? Oh, sorry. Didn't realize you were an expert on which animals screw a lot. <sighs> Please stop saying the word screw. Robert finishes his drink and slides it away from him. He gets up out of the booth. Me and Skyne are gonna hit the bricks. You coming with? Mary casts one last glance at the sad sap she's been hunting and downs the rest of her wine in one gulp. Mm? This place is dead anyways. We exit the bar and find the typically empty streets filled with a small crowd of people. At the front is a guy with a really deliberate attitude and bad posture. He carries a lantern that he shines up at his face for a dramatic effect. I need a sip of tea. <sighs> What's going on? Looks like it's one of those walking ghost tours. They do that in this part of town all the time. I've always wanted to do one of those. Mm. You know all the stories are fake, right? Huh. Pretty much all my stories are fake. This is research. Ah. Robert makes a beeline towards the back of the group. He turns around when he notices that I'm not following him. <laughs> Come on. We can't just crash it, can we? Mm. Don't be such a square, Sky. Just act like you belong. Robert sidles up to the tour group. I reluctantly fall into step behind him. Well, here goes nothing. Hey, hey, it was in this place in 1694 that the most infamous witch trials were held. To date, we do not know if the people burned at the stake were actually witches, but it is widely reported that their ghosts still haunt this hapless knife bar to this very day. Mm -hmm. It was actually 1692. What? And the site was over by the coffee shop down the road. I'm sorry, who are you? Daniel McSturge's ghost historian. <laughs> this is my colleague, Dr. 80s reference, obviously. Dr. Loom is paranormal investigator extraordinaire. We're touring America's most haunted locations as we research for our new book. Mm -hmm. You may have seen our guest cameo on Paranormal House Hunters Extreme Edition. A couple of people in the group start nodding. Man, Robert's good at this. I, uh, you guys part of the group? I don't remember seeing you at first stop. We like to keep a low profile. Easier to catch ghosts that way. Oh. They've definitely been here. Been standing right next to them the whole time. Thank you, random lady who I do not know. Mm. As I was saying, the epicenter of paranormal activity can be found at the coffee spoon. Over there. The man who runs it has been plagued by hauntings since he signed the lease. Damn near driven him mad. Mm. But whatever you want to say is cool, I guess. It's your tour. Uh. Man, I didn't know that about Matt. Wait, Robert's making this up. <laughs> the rest of the tour group listens intently to Robert's every word. I think the tour guide can tell that he's losing the group. He seems to be getting flustered. Th thank you for the contribution and knowledge, Mr. McSturgis. Let's move on to the next haunted location. Robert, Mary, and I follow the group down the street. That tour guide's shirt is cool. No, it's not! Oh my god. Yeah, everyone in the group gets one if we make it to the final location. I turn to Robert and grab him by the shoulders. I need that t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Well, guess we're in this for the long haul, then. Just follow my lead. Don't arouse too much suspicion, and we'll have cool ghost stories in no time. Or cool ghost shirts. <laughs> hey. <sighs> Our group arrives at an old, decrepit, colonial-style house. That's the good stuff. A quick pause in the tour, but my name is Quinn, but most people on the ghost tour circuit call me Tour Master Quinn. I am a DJ, trivia master, and part-time actor. I do private ghost hunting events, birthday parties, MC bar mitzvahs, and perform traditional vaudeville in my work. Tour Master Quinn gives out headshots to all of us. His resume is on the back. Well, that's sad. Huh, stage combat experience. <laughs> Anyway, here's a little bit of history for you all. This was the home of noted American author Dorothy Pembridge, whose prose was wildly popular in the late 19th century. It was in the attic of this very home where she wrote such classics as The Diaries of a Victorian Mistress, Lady Fitzwilliam's Courtship, and The Ghost of Sea Captain Reginald Barclay. She unfortunately died of consumption shortly after the turn of the century. But several people have reported that on some nights you can see a light from the attic, where the ghost of Miss Pembridge continues to work on her latest bestseller. I guess you could say she was consumed by her work. 
No reaction from the crowd. This guy needs work on his dad jokes. Actually, consumption is the popular cover-up. Little known fact is, it was a murder-suicide. Right. Uh, I'm pretty sure she died of consumption. Sure, sure. And we definitely didn't hire Stanley Kubrick to elaborately fake the moon landing. That's the watered-down, censored version they teach you in school. But if you can't handle the real story, I understand. It's not for the faint of heart. This guy is such a tremendous, spectacular asshole, but it's kind of okay. <laughs> Can we... I think everyone would much rather would much <laughs> I think everyone much would much rather hear what this world round ghost historian has to say, right, everybody? The group murmurs in agreement. This is a topic we cover extensively in our book. Doctor Loomis, would you care to tell this story? <laughs> Rely on amazing improv comedy skills. How about let's not do that? Ah, uh, yes. Though it's rarely covered in traditional textbooks, Dorothy Pembridge was caught in a fierce rivalry with fellow local author Arthur Livingston Price. Arthur's books were blatant ripoffs of Pembridge's work and consistently sold better. Pembridge was enraged by this and confronted Livingstone Price at his home with plans to end his life. Their bitter feud surprisingly blossomed into a torrid, passionate affair. After many months of secret courtship, Pembridge followed through with her original plan and poisoned Livingston Price in his sleep. Overcome with unexpected grief, Pembridge polished off the last of the poison and died by her lover's side. Reports say that couples who enter this house will no doubt doom their relationship to a bitter end. Man, I should bring my wife here. The entire tour group laughs heartily. I'm kidding. My wife is dead. The crowd gasps. She was killed by a ghost. The crowd gasps again. <laughs> I'm just messing with you guys. A nervous chuckle ripples through the crowd. The tour guide seizes an opportunity to take back the group and addresses us with some razzle-dazzle. Haha! What an interesting story! Ugh. Now, I just want everyone to know that the next location is extremely terrifying. If anything, thinks, anyone thinks they can't handle it, please feel free to excuse yourselves. Hmm. <laughs> Alright, I'm bored. Mary turns to a young guy looking at his phone and taps him on the shoulder. Hey, kid. Fancy buying a gal a drink? The guy looks up at her and smiles. Only if the bar is haunted. Honey, I can show you the most haunted place in town. I think I could exercise your demons if that was what you're looking for. Ah. Don't write checks. Your dick can't cash, kid. His eyes go wide. Mary salutes me and Robert. She suddenly pulls me into a hug and murmurs into my ear. <sighs> When you've known Rob for as long as I have, you know when something's wrong. Keep an eye on him to, for me tonight, okay? Sure, Mary. Good man. Mary pats me on the back and pulls away. She takes the guy's hand and leads him down the street. Ah. Take it sleazy, fellows. God help that poor soul. Mary or the kid? Both. <laughs> hey. Our last stop. This burial ground is such a hotbed of terrifying paranormal activity that I am not even sure where to begin. There's the Wailing Ghost of the Wharf Man, the Vampire of Maple Bay, or the Children of the Moonlight. What about the Dover Ghost? By this point, the tour guide is clearly irritated with us. So what sad. about it? Oh, nothing. I just think it would be a crime to come all the way out to the cemetery, the actual origin of one of New England's most notorious paranormal entities, and not even mention the infamous Dover Ghost. That is not a real thing. That is absolutely not a real thing. I think someone needs to brush up on their paranormal history. I know tons about paranormal history. I know every ghost story in this area. Mm. I can't guarantee you there's one there's you don't know. Robert looks over at me and at, oh. at me and smiles. Would you folks care to hear the tale of how Loomis and I met? <laughs> no. The entire group shushes the tour guide. Okay, fine, fine, tell the story. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a dark and stormy night. It, I wasn't always a paranormal investigator. Oh. Way back when, I was just a... Hey. Traveling grifter, moving from town to town, always looking for my next mark. It wasn't an easy life, but I had fun. Taking from the rich, giving to the poor. Well, actually, also taking from the poor. I had a shaky moral foundation. I happened upon the quiet town of Maple Bay quite by accident, but little did I know that this city has a dark side. Now, about the same time, I was just starting out to an apprentice to a rather famous ghost hunter who was an old family friend of mine. I carried the equipment, operated the EVP machine, all of that. Wait. Who? <sighs> oh, what's the famous ghost hunter? Well, I don't like to name drop, but 
Georgia Mathers. The tour group gasps. Georgia Mathers, she's a legend. You know her? Knew her. Amazing woman. Died mysteriously. Miss you, Georgie. Anyway, we were in Maple Bay, investigating some reports of strange lights and sounds coming from the cemetery late at night. Now, we'd been warned by the old crypt keeper that keeper this place was highly dangerous, but Georgia was never one to shy away from an adventure. We camped out in the center of the cemetery for three nights straight. We endured your so-called wailing watchman. Wailing ghost of the wharfman. Whatever. Your stupid vampire was just a teenager in a mask, but the Dover ghost. Man. Tell them, Loomis. Good lord, there's a lot of eggplants in chat. I can't... Like... It, they get automatically held back because YouTube thinks you're spamming. And you are. <laughs> so I have to approve them all manually. I... So, there I was, just walking back to my hotel after a long day, long day of... Working a couple of short cons. Classic, classic pigeon drop scam, pulling out fields for a rip deal. I was gonna steal a baby, probably. Would have made me rich. I find myself walking past this very cemetery. Now, I was never a very superstitious man, but something seemed off. I could hear some kind of commotion deep, happening deep within the graveyard, and I felt compelled to investigate. And thank God you did. Georgia and I were conducting a seance in the mausoleum. At first, things were pretty normal, but after an hour, everything went south. Playing back the EVP meter, we were able to hear a single word. Run. The air suddenly went cold. Something was very, very wrong. I just knew we weren't alone. We started to hear this faint, distant scraping noise, like something being dragged across the ground. It got louder and louder until it was deafening. Some kind of demented howl. And then I felt it. Someone, something, grabbing my ankle. Robert has the whole crowd hook, line, and sinker. You could hear a pin drop. I've only cried twice in my life. Once was at the birth of my daughter. The other was when that thing started dragging me. I wasn't sure where it was taking me, but I knew it was no place I wanted to go. I was sure I was going to die. The moment I crossed the gate into the cemetery, I heard this god-awful screeching. I ran into the mausoleum just in time to see a man being pulled across the floor by... God, to this day, the mere thought of it ties my stomach into knots. It looked like a man, but like... I glanced at Robert. Like someone who didn't know what a man was supposed to look like tried to put one together. The arms were too long. Its eyes glowed red. It was like a walking shadow. What do I do? What what any good person would do? I lunged for... Shoot, what was his fake name again? Daniel. Okay, thank God I remembered it. God damn it. This is a quiz all of a sudden. I grabbed his hand and entered into a tug of war with the unholiest of forces. I thought I was going to be torn in half. But I had God on my side. The pocket Bible I always kept on me fell out of my shirt pocket, and to this day, I can remember what passage it opened up to. I mean, maybe it doesn't matter, but Leviticus seems like a bad bet. Let's try Revelations. Blessed is he that readeth, that they, and that they hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. I have no idea what Robert pulled that verse from. With a horrifying growl, the entity finally relented. Daniel and I collapsed onto the ground, exhausted. We were both covered in blood. That damn creature clawed into my chest. Got me real good. Had to get 16 stitches. Robert pulls down the collar of his shirt to reveal a very long, wicked scar across his pecs. And that's how I got this scar. I followed Georgia Mathers to the end of the earth. We faced exorcisms, demons, poltergeists that threw our equipment across the room. But I'd never seen Georgia so scared. She was never the same after that, and neither was I. Watching what happened to Daniel and Georgia shook my faith, but I came out of that experience a better man, and a better friend, and we've been brothers ever since. The tour group gives us a round of applause as Daniel, uh, Robert, and I share an emotional hug. As he embraces me, I can smell the cologne on his neck. Oh, Robert does clean up good. Oh, hello, Super Chat. Thank you. Hey, and it popped up on screen like it's supposed to this time. I saw you live, so here's 5,000 views worth of cash. Thank you very much. Thank you. It really, it, it genuinely is the fact that, like, even, like, one dollar from a viewer is more valuable usually than a thousand views. So, like, again, as I always do at the end of my videos, I'll just encourage you, if you have a YouTuber you like, if you support them directly with any amount of money, 
you're helping out an absolutely enormous amount. I find myself lingering a little too long on the hug. The tour guide seems to have bought it. Even he's wiping a tear from his eyes. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be able to share our story. Be sure to watch out for our book. <laughs> the bros guides to the hottest ghost. <laughs> All right. Well, I think you're both definitely earned your t-shirts. The tour guide hands us the coveted t-shirts. He then slips us both his business card and leans in close. If you guys are ever in need of a professional actor, balloon animal artist, Elvis impersonator, or nude model, please do not hesitate to contact me. Ah. You got it, buddy. After a couple of tourists take selfies with us, we split away from the group and walk home. <laughs> uh... Nothing like the high. Nothing like the high of running a massive scam on gullible people, huh? That was incredible. I really can't believe they bought all of that. I didn't know you had it in it. In your sky. Excuse me, Dr. Loomis. Mm -hmm. That bit about the pocket Bible was aces. Although giving the Dover ghost glowing red eyes was a little cliche. And the Cupid conspiracy theory bit wasn't? <laughs> all part of the character. Well, we got the shirts out of it. We arrive in front of Robert's house. Mm -hmm. Wanna have a drink? Robert, how long have you known me for? Do you really think I would turn down the opportunity to share a fine alcoholic beverage with my treasured friend and accomplished Mr. Robert Bobbert Small? Mm. If you ever call me Bobbert again, I will kick you right in the shins. Both of them. Oh. Then you can expect an angry phone call from my orthopedist in the morning. Uh, Bobbert? Robert just laughs and starts unlocking his door. My shins live to die another day. Robert leads me inside. I can't help but think about what Mary said to me. Robert did seem a little bit off, but that completely disappeared when we were joking around with the ghost tour. I don't know. He's hard to read. While I'm thinking, I hear claws skittering across the floor. Oh god, it's his pit bull! I'm about to be torn to shreds! I shut my eyes tight and brace for impact. Betsy, hey, be nice! I don't feel anything but tiny paws scratching at my shoes. I open my eyes. Betsy? Robert's dog jumps away from uh, did Robert's voice there jumps away from me, rotting in circles running around in circles and sniffing Robert's legs. He pats her on the head. Hey, that's not a pit bull. This is the cutest, dumbest Boston Terrier I have ever seen. Betsy, you're not a pit bull. And you weren't taken by the Dover ghost? Betsy's made of tougher stuff than that, ain't you, girl? Betsy rolls over for some well served belly rubs. I just keep a picture of my of a large pit bull in my wallet in case of Emergencies. Comedic emergencies. Uh, let's see. Hang on. <sighs> we make our way through to Robert's living room. For a quiet man with arguably the oldest pickup truck that can be legally driven, his place is amazing. There are sleek modern appliances throughout the room with a big flat screen TV mounted on the wall. He has shelves upon shelves of DVDs. Guess he wasn't lying about being really into cinema. He pours us both glasses of whiskey from a well-stocked bar in the corner while Betsy curls up on a pile of cushions. So, how did you really get that scar? And don't tell me you got it fisking, fishing for Alaskan king crabs in the Bering Sea or something. You train me too well. <laughs> Robert laughs and takes a sip of his drink. Mm -hmm. My daughter and I were riding our bikes. I had a rock flew over the handlebars and then we went to the hospital. That said... Not a very interesting story. I've never heard you talk about your daughter. Well, I have one. <sighs> That's her. He points at a picture on the wall of a very serious little girl with dark eyes. Yeah, that's definitely Robert's daughter. How old is she? Uh, 25? 26? Not too sure. Does she live around here? Uh -huh. No, Val lives back home in Brooklyn. Works at some new media online magazine thing. Makes buckets, though. He suddenly seems really serious. I probably shouldn't press him about it. He likes Santana. Yeah, actually. Oh. Great. Robert puts on Santana, then takes the uh, uh, takes a seat on the couch next to me. Excuse me for a second. I don't know what it is about doing voices that makes me feel snotty, but it happens. He suddenly downs his drink in one gulp. Hey! Are you alright? Hi. Oh, I really hope. 
Hang on. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna make sure... Yes, streamer safe mode is on. Because... If you don't have that on... And some, some not safe for streaming music starts playing, then your whole video gets demonetized. It's very annoying. Or even removed. Robert leans in and kisses me. The taste of whiskey burning my lips. I'm surprised at first, but slowly I relax into his arms. He pulls away slightly, his lips barely brushing against my mouth. I am now. I can't say anything at best managing a sigh. Robert leans in again, kissing me harder. He pulls my bottom lip between his teeth and bites slightly. Okay, this is getting steamy. He's sliding a hand under my shirt. My heart pounds in my chest as he lies uh, us both down on the couch. He kisses a trail down my neck, his teeth grazing my skin. Nobody better clip this. I, I just, wait, it's not that. Robert bites down and I have to stifle a moan. Stop, Robert stiffens up and pulls away. No biting. No, no, I'm more than okay with that. Something's up. Robert runs a hand through his hair and looks away. I'm fine, I've just been kind of stressed out. Tired. Not a big deal. <clears throat> Sorry, Robert. Listen, I want this as badly as you do, but I know something's wrong. I need to make sure you're okay. Robert stares mm -hmm. at the ground. You don't know me that well, Skyne. I'm not... A good person. He takes a deep breath. I spend my whole life only taking and taking and taking and taking. Now here I am, an old broken man sitting on top of a pile of everything I've ever taken, alone. But I want to know you. You don't have to keep hiding behind fake stories and acting like you don't have feelings. It's... he sighs heavily. It's Val. She's visiting tomorrow. She wants to patch things up. Are you, uh, I'm sorry, but is this a bit? Rawr. <laughs> no. When was the last time you saw her? Three, four, I think. Months? Oh. Years. I sit up straight. Jesus, Robert. What happened between you two? Mm. I don't want to talk about it. Robert and I sit in silence, neither of us wanting to look at each other, both of us unsure what to do next. Fine. Things were already bad between us. I cared about her, I always did. Things just got in the way. Before I knew it, she was leaving for college, wanting nothing to do with me. Marilyn and I moved out here to settle down. We thought it would help to get away from all the distractions, all the money, drinking. But temptation gets to you. I tried to be better, but I just couldn't. And then the accident changed everything. I think every day about how she must have died, hating me. I never became the better man that she wanted me to be. The one she always saw in me. She was the last thread Val and I had connecting us together. I didn't know that when I lost my wife, I was going to lose my daughter too. Robert... I spent so much time chasing after things I thought were going to make me happy that I ruined my only real chance at happiness. Now my wife is dead, and my daughter hates me. And then I convinced myself that this he gestures vaguely in my direction was going to make me happy. Why do I even try anymore? I'm so sorry. I know how hard it is to... No, you don't. How could you possibly know how this feels? You did everything right. Your daughter loves you. You're a good person. I was a terrible husband, and I'm an even worse father. I have no idea why she's even bothering to contact me now. I know I'm just gonna fuck it up like I always do. I'm broken. I shouldn't even go. Robert puts his head in his hands. Ugh, God. It's tempting to say what he wants to hear, but he needs to hear something here. Nothing is gonna change until you do. Robert pauses. He looks at me. There's a lot of things in my life I regret. I wish I could, that I wish I could take back or do over, and it hurts so much to know that I can't. But what I can do, and what you have the privilege of doing tomorrow morning, is wake up and try to be a better person than you were the day before. Things aren't going to fix themselves tomorrow or the next day, and patching things up with Val isn't going to solve all your problems either. But nothing is going to change if you don't. And you can't love anyone else until you stop hating yourself. And you're right, I don't know you that well, but you have the same capacity for good that we all have. And I know you can find it. 
Val is giving you a chance. Don't waste it. But, Robert, listen to me. It's gonna be okay. But... I lean over and embrace Robert, pulling him in as tightly as I can. He buries his head into my shoulder, hugging me back. It's gonna be okay. I place a hand on the back of his head and stroke his hair. He shudders, then sobs, and I realize that he's crying. Thank you. We stay there for a while, holding each other. We both eventually drift off to sleep. <laughs> yeah, this game likes to throw curveballs. You're a straight shooter. I like that. God damn it, Dan Avidan. I really don't need you telling me that. Ugh, I think, uh, okay, so now we're back to the surprise party. We've already done this one once before. So we'll just fast forward through, like, most of it. Wait, shit, fuck. We fast forwarded through too much of it. Oh, okay, so, ah, so I see, the dialogue changes in the party at the end, depending on who you've been dating. I see, okay. Let's just, let's just take this from the top, then. I'll walk over to Mary, who's having a lively conversation with Amanda. Listen, kid, you're gonna need some real life skills out there if you're gonna make it on, out on the streets. I'm going to college. Same thing. Look, I know you're not old enough to drink. Right. And I know you're smart enough not to drink until you're of legal age. Uh-huh. But, hypothetically, if you were to drink, it'd behoove you to drink a glass of water between rounds. Got it. Aww. Hypothetically. Mm. And if you wake up with a headache, all you gotta do is take a jar of pickles and drink the pickle juice. You're gonna be fine. What's going on here? Ugh. Girl, talk. Mary turns back to Amanda. Uh. Now, let me tell you about how to deal with a bad roommate. First thing to know, you get straight A's if they die during the semester. Mary! Ugh. Relax, it's a myth. Mm. Supposedly. Against my better judgment, I leave them be. Hmm. I don't think I recognize that girl. Oh, she's very pretty. That girl by the snack table. I should go say hello. Hi. I don't think we've met. Oh, we've met years ago. And I'm here for my revenge. You're Robert's kid, aren't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spot on. I guess that makes you skyin, huh? Yeah, it's nice to meet you. I'm glad Robert brought you along. He promised there'd be free food, so it's kind of hard to pass up, and... Look, I don't know you, but I can get... Can I get real with you for a sec? My old man is a real close book, you know? Me and him, we got a long way to go. You don't erase decades of neglect in a week, but you sure can't get tired of staying angry about it. That kind of bitterness, it poisons you, I think. I'm too young for that. Anyway, lately he's been... better. A lot better. And between him shaving for once and how much he talks about you... I get the feeling you have something to do with it, so thanks. Robert means a lot to me. I'm glad he's getting better. Just keep an eye on him while I'm not around, okay? Or else. What? I'm kidding. Or am I? I don't know why I'm like this. I think it runs in the family. Amanda trots up to the conversation. Mm. Hey, love your necklace. And your hair. Mm. And just, jeez, your whole vibe is cool. Okay, yeah, she's definitely bi. Good lord. Thanks. I like your jacket. My girlfriend collects pins, too. Oh, this is my daughter, Amanda. Amanda, this is Robert's daughter, Val. Nice meeting you. I hear you're a photographer. Mm. Aspiring photographer. I'm going to school for it. Mm. Take pictures. Yes. <laughs> then you're a photographer. Welcome to the biz. Val hands Amanda a business card. If you're ever looking for internships, shoot me an email. Anyway, I need to go make friends with that woman over there who's dual-wielding wine glasses. Catch you later. Val walks away. She's so cool! She gave me her business card! She touched my hand! Yeah, strong queer vibes from Amanda there. Congrats, she just networked for the first time. I'm a regular business lady now. Quarterly projections, stock markets, synergy! While you're making a fortune as a businesswoman, I gotta keep this party going. Catch you around, pops. 
Sky in. Brian, you made it. Ha, I don't pass up on good Mac. What do you think of the party? It's not bad. Okay, this bit we've seen before. Craig, hey, bro. Let's see. Thanks for coming by. Yeah. Okay. Amanda wanders over and sits down. I think we've got this still. Yeah, we've already been through that bit. There we go. I, last time I was barely holding it together during the scene with like Amanda and my character have this emotional heart to heart moment. Like I, I was this close to choking up a little bit. Not doing that again right now. Not at the start of the stream anyway. Well, I say start. We've been going for almost an hour. I glanced over to the back of the yard where Robert is sitting on a bench beneath our cherry blossom tree. He smiles at me. I'll leave you to it. Me and the Emmas are gonna go get ice cream. Love you, Pops. <clears throat> Amanda runs off to join her friends. I take a seat next to Robert as the last guest to uh, make their way out of the party. Hey. Hey. Robert gestures vaguely to the snack table. Good stuff. Yep. So, I had a chance to talk to Val. Oh. She physically threatened you? Yeah. Mm. That's my girl. She said you've been doing better. Trying to work on the vices. I also showered today. We sit in silence for a moment. You know, every day is a battle for me for me is a battle against my own self-destructive habits, but lately it's gotten a little easier. Thanks for talking some sense into me. It's hard to get things through my thick skull sometimes, but what you said that night has actually helped. I'm glad. I like you, Skyen. I like you a lot. I haven't felt this way about someone in a long time. I lean in and kiss him for a moment before he pulls away. He takes my hand in his. Ah. You're special to me. Mm -hmm. But I have some stuff I need to work on. Uh, emotionally. Before I can get into anything romantic with you. You deserve better than who I am right now. I need to be on my own for a bit. Figure some things out. Of course. I think what you need right now is a friend and... I'm very happy to be that for you. Did I just get friend zoned? Well, it's probably healthier. Thank you. That means a lot to me. And if you're ever ready for more than that, well, you know where to find me. Let's hunt ghosts sometime. I would love that. I put my head on his shoulder and we watch the sun slowly dip below the horizon together. See, this is where, like... This is where the concept of the friend zone shows what a bad concept it really is. Because one of the things you have the opportunity to do at the start of the game is just to have sex with him right away. Like, he literally just, like, come in and have a fuck, and then, like, which... Probably, like, the worst thing you could possibly do given the state of mind that he's in. That, he, like, he's using alcohol, he's using sex, he's using self-destructive tendencies as a way to punish himself for what he sees as his failures. And so you get to the end of the game after all this, this this dating stuff, and it's like he's he's realized that maybe jumping right into a relationship, given the state that he's in, is a bad idea. And like that's where you're like, oh yeah, you got friend zone, except like, yeah, but that's like infinitely preferable though. Like, isn't this like a hundred million times better than getting into a relationship that's just gonna flame out in a terrible wreck? Which is a well-observed thing. Like, I think it's it's well-observed of the game to realize that a character like Robert, someone specifically like him, might not necessarily be, like, it, it might not be the, the good ending for him, might not be getting into a relationship. The good ending for him might be coming to a place where he can begin to make himself ready for a, rela a relationship, which is emotionally mature, I have to say for a game that has a character named Damien Bloodmarch in it. <laughs> and that many silly ghost stories.
But yeah, that was a good route. Like, you only get to spend so much time with the characters given that there's uh, like a three date limit on the thing, but. That was, that, was, that was surprisingly well thought out as an ending. Especially given that the game is a wish fulfillment fantasy. Like, that's, that's literally what it was designed to be, was to be one big, giant, massive wish fulfillment fantasy. More than anything else. Like, or at least that's how it's pitched. And then yet to have that, that aspect of it, rather than just fulfill the fantasy in terms of, you get to have the hot guy, then it fulfills a fantasy in terms of like having an emotionally fulfilling relationship with someone. That's a lovely illustration. Oh, I like that. See how they've given the car and like Robert, the, the, the things in the foreground here have a white outline that uh, separates them from the background. That's actually a really clever way to do it. Because they haven't used the same trick with the grass that overlaps the foreground, so you get a lovely sense of depth, but the white outline around the character gives it also a good graphic look. That works really well. Okay then, let's find a proper save. This one, I think. Welcome. You've got dads. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So that's Damien and Robert out of the way, and now, well, now what do we do? Yeah, uh, I. I I do remember, like, when the game came out, there was a lot of discussion about the characters, and Damien is canonically trans, but it never comes up as, like, a thing. Like, there's never a scene where, it's where like, he comes out as being trans. Which, I th which, as I recall, in terms of what the creator said, it was kind of important to them that it shouldn't be a big deal. It's just one thing about him that he happens to have been, you know, born with a particular body in the same way that some people have, you know more muscle or less muscle, but it's not, like, a big deal for the character. Which is one way to do it. Like, which is something... This, that's just something that, that kind of annoys me when people talk about <clears throat> queer representation and stuff, is that you get a certain stripe of person who's like, well, the only way to ever have a gay character in a game ever is if the gay stuff is never brought up, it's never mentioned, it's not a big deal, no one ever talks about it, it's not even a thing. Like, there's there's this dogmatic approach that, like, the only way to have have good gay representation or good queer representation of any kind is to never bring it up. Okay, they just queer, it's just there, but no one talks about it, no one brings it up, it's not part of their story, which is so false. And people have used Dream Daddy, I've seen that in a, a, as an example in discussions like that. No, see, Dream Daddy, that means it's correct because that's a that's a gay game, so that means it's sanctioned by the gay Illuminati or whatever, that for, therefore it's correct. And it's so annoying because representation and storytelling is way more complicated than that. It's like there's you can tell stories about people who just happen to be one identity or another and it's not a big deal and it's never brought up. You can do that. That's one valid mode of re representation. But it's also equally important to have stories where like that shit does get brought up because it's part of people's lives. It's part of characters' lives. And you can't just like you can't just pretend that ignoring it is the only enlightened route because it's not. It's it's a reductive route. Anyway, how did we get into this discussion? That's not what we we're talking about at all. Who should we romance next? Which hot dad should we be doing kissy faces with? Let's see, someone recommends ending on Craig, Hugo, or Matt. Works for me. I'm certainly not gonna gonna end on Joseph though, cuz yeah. Oh, everyone has opinions. 
But yeah, I mean, representation is, it's not one thing or the other. It's all of it. Because, like, you have, you have straight stories where sometimes the characters being straight and being in love with each other is the point of the story. We call those romantic comedies, typically, or romances. And then you have stories where it's not even remotely a thing that matters at all, and usually we call those action movies. Right? And that... The only thing that's being asked for is, let's have that, but also for queer characters, or people of color, or, you know, anyone who isn't straight and white. Instead of reducing them down to, oh, you can only tell this kind of story about these characters. It has to include these things or not include those things, and you can't do anything else, is the issue. But anyway. Yeah, let's do Brian. You know what? Screw it. Let's do Brian. Let's just get him out of the way, because he's annoying as hell. And I want to see how the hell this game thinks it's going to manage to make me like him. <laughs> okay, uh, hang on. Go away, notifications. I don't want you right now. Man, I don't know how I feel about hanging out with Brian more, but it seems like Daisy and Amanda got along really well. Maybe I should just bite the bullet and hang out with Brian more for the sake of the kids. I crack my knuckles and start typing. Hey, Brian, great grabbing burgers with you at the cookout yesterday. We should get the kids together and hang out some soon. <laughs> I'll wait a couple of minutes until a ding comes from my computer and a message pops up on screen. It's Brian. Let's see what he has to say. Hey, man. Always love a, love a good... Oh, my God. I even hate the way he writes. Okay. <clears throat> Hey man, always love a good burg with a buddy. We should hang definitely hang out. What do you think about mini golf? We could bring the girls out and have a friends have ourselves a nice friendly little competition. Rock on, Brian. He signed his name. That's cute. It's just immediately the first thing he goes to is competition. God damn it. <laughs> friendly competition? This is perfect. I know Amanda and I will crush Brian in mini golf. I've been taking her to mini golf courses since she was a little kid, and I'm proud to say that she's almost better at it than I am. Yeah, this is not going to go badly at all. <laughs> almost. I type back. That sounds great, man. Name the time and place and we'll be there. Hey, Amanda. Hey, would you up for some mini golf with Brian and Daisy? I'm a little out of practice, and I know a backswing leaves something to be desired, but I think I could keep it in the negatives. Perfect. Come on, kiddo, let's do this. You ready for this? Oh, this is an interesting... ...background. So they seem to have gone for a sort of semi-fish islands effect on the mini golf course, which is an interesting aesthetic choice. One that leaves me somewhat disoriented, I have to say. <laughs> yes! You ready for this? Our matey! I'm as ready as I'll ever be! Why are you talking like that? Because this mini golf course is pirate themed? I just now realized that we are indeed standing on top of a giant pirate ship in the middle of a putt-putt course. Oh! Right. Come on, pirate dad! Won't you talk like a pirate with me? Arr! Uh, ahoy, scurvy? I'll make Brian and- I'll make Brian and Daisy walk the plank with my superior golfing abilities. I mean, uh, doubloon? Come on, Dad. You told me that this was just going to be some friendly competition. Friendly competition is dad code for actual competition. I need to prepare my mind, body, and soul to defeat Brian on the field of glorious battle. Mm. It's just mini golf? Just mini golf? It's so much more than that. I kneel down and place a hand on Amanda's shoulder. I just want you to know that there's no pressure, it's not a big deal, don't worry about it too much, but we have to beat Brian at mini golf. Whatever happened to just having fun? Oh, we will have fun. When we beat them. Hmm. Amanda gives me a side eye, but before I can side eye her back, I spot Brian and Daisy. Hey. Ahoy there, mateys. Huh. No, deeper still. Ahoy. Brian walks up with Daisy in tow. It looks like they've already rented us some golf clubs for our mini golf excursion. Total power move. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah. All right, first mate, I hear there's treasure buried in these waters. You gonna help me plunder it? Oh, uh, Amanda, I don't think this is a real pirate ship. I think it's just to play putt-putt on. Ugh. Amanda gives Daisy a look. I mean, hi, hi, Captain. Daisy winks at Amanda. <laughs> ah, look at those two. They're two peas in a pod. So, you excited to get some mini golf in? 
Oh, <laughs> you know it. You're a gambling man. <laughs> well, that's laying it on a little thick a little early, isn't it? Depends what's on the table. What are you willing to part with? Ah. How about the loser buys drinks tonight? All right, but how about we make it a bit more interesting? I'm listening. The loser has to mow the winner's lawn this weekend. Well, my yard is pretty big. Are you prepared to take that on? I think you should be a little more concerned about how you're gonna maneuver around my hedges. It's highly technical work, not for the faint of heart. I don't think I'll need to worry about that. I'm very good at mini golf, you know. Oh yeah? Hold in one, every time. What I just said is not a true thing, but it already came out of my mouth, so I have to stand by it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing that happen. Brian and I eye each other up and down. May the best dad win. Brian and I shake hands and lock eyes. It's about to go down. This is so stupid. This is so profoundly dumb. It's also funny, but it's dumb. Right. Yeah, it's going okay, <clears throat> for the moment. I think... There! Nice! <laughs> ah, damn it. A little too early there. Should have waited. Hmm. No! Damn it. It was going so well! Lost your ball. But I think us get what I'm being signaled here. You oh, you son of a bitch! Ball. Eh, close. It's gonna be like a B or something. Oh, S! Cool. Hey, you having a good time? I'm having a great time. I'm having a fantastic time destroying Brian underfoot. Mm. I just ask because your eye is twitching? No, it's not. I feel my left eye twitch. Amanda raises her eyebrows. Huh? We're out here to have fun, remember? It's just a game. You're right. It is just a game. A game with extremely high stakes. A game we're currently winning. Mm. Dad! Huh. Please, Amanda, please nail this next hole for me. We need to keep this streak going. If it's really that important to you, sure. Amanda walks over and tees up for a particularly hard windmill hole. Gripping her club, she winds up and launches the ball into the parking lot. She looks me right in the eye and does an exaggerated mm -hmm. shrug. Oops. I disagree with her actions, but I appreciate her, youth of, her act of youthful defiance. She walks over and pats me on the back. That was for your own good. <sighs> Love you, kiddo. Okay, more of it. Yeah, that was way too early. Okay. But I don't feel like there's a time limit on it, so... Yeah. So that one is... Hang on. There we go. Nice. So for that one, I'll want to bounce it over there, won't I? Yeah, not like that. I was hoping to hit it from the inside, but this thing moves too fast. Those I remember from actual golf courses. They're pretty easy. Or mini golf courses, rather. Come on. Ah, so close! What the hell is this, a pachinko? Okay. Eh. 
That was still an S, apparently. <laughs> Somehow. I try to maintain an air of professionalism because there are children present, but confetti cannons are going off in my brain, and someone is placing a wreath around inner me with the words best dad emblazoned on it. Man, that was some good shooting there, Sky. I have bested you on the field of battle. <laughs> no. Let's 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 not be that petty. The secret to mini golf is that you have to be really, really good at it. Arr, Daisy, did you have a good time? Yo ho ho, I did. We haven't even found the buried treasure yet. I think we would need to apply for a permit to dig around here. Can I take Daisy home so you uh, I can take Daisy home so we can get the city paperwork started for digging. You two go enjoy your night. Sounds like a plan. Sky, and you cool with that? Sure. Just don't get yourselves into too much trouble. Gee. Can do. I'll make sure we get into a perfectly reasonable amount of trouble. Amanda and Daisy skip away, yelling about buried treasure. Bless that kid's tiny rebellious heart. Ah. Well, guess we should hit the bar now. Hey. There's actually a tiki bar attached to this place. How about that? That sounds like a plan. Brian and I walk into the Freaky Tiki, a kitschy island-themed bar. Palm trees adorn the walls, and several fake parrots str are strewn about. Ukulele music plays softly in the background. Brian and I approach the bamboo bar. I still need a slightly deeper voice for him, I think. Guess I'm spending more time with Brian, which is a little more bearable since I won. Okay, just gotta get my victory drink and get out of here. I think I've already proved my superior dadness for the day. Hey. Two pineapples of hospitality, please. The bartender whips us up two rum drinks inside of a hollowed-out pineapples. He sets them on fire, and we have to blow them out before we can drink them. Usually, I just like to, I don't know, drink my drinks. <laughs> if you don't want yours, I'll take it. And miss out on the taste of victory? I don't think so. I take a sip of my pineapple of hospitality. Victory tastes fruity. Let's see. Let's talk about lawn maintenance. I'm very particular. No electric mowers for me. I hand cut everything with scissors. I also only water the lawn with bottled sparkling water. I just ran out, so you're gonna have <laughs> got to have to import some. Italian is preferred, but I'll settle for Icelandic if that's all you have. It's sweet that you're willing to pay. It's okay, buddy. I know just the trick to perk it back up. I'll work my magic when I finish trimming your grass with the tiniest pairs of scissors I own. Man, even when he's trying to be helpful, I feel personally attacked. Yeah, Brian, you dick. <laughs> While I sip more of my drink, I notice the TV in the corner. Hey, Extreme Makeover Deck Edition is on. I love this show. Always made me want to own a deck. Ugh, I hate this show. Why? It's so clearly fake. Well, yeah, it's reality TV. Who cares? I care. I'm a general contractor. I work with decks all the time. There's no way they're renovating those decks in a matter of two days. It's impossible. That's a three-week job minimum. So you want them to cover those three weeks extensively in every episode? It can't be that interesting to watch a bunch of dudes slave over a deck for that long. Nobody would watch it. <laughs> I don't like any of those home improvement shows. I want to watch stuff that's real. Like long-haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers. Oh. I have terrible news for you, Skyn. No. No, not them too. That's the awful truth. Ah. Not the ghosts, though. Those are real. Trucks just don't have emergency escape buttons. I've been lied to for so long. We both chuckle and sip in our pineapples. So wait, you're a general contractor? Hey. Sure am. I actually helped to plan the cul-de-sac we live in. Wow, nice work. Hey. Yeah, I kind of took after the footsteps of my old man. He was a general contractor too? The best. He practically built half this town with his bare hands. It's weird how you spend your whole life trying not to become your father, and then you wake up one day and there you are. But I get to work with my hands, and it pays more than enough to take care of my daughter, so it's an absolute dream job. For me, at least. Hmm, well, that is impressive. Building stuff has always been my weak point as a dad, and I've been okay with that. Until now. Now, I must defeat him. I do have that patio furniture that I still haven't put together sitting in the garage. Okay, okay, maybe I should cool it with the dad competition. Gotta keep it light. See, if you ask about his daughter... And you're just gonna... But he's also gonna like it. So, Daisy seems pretty smart for her age. Yeah, she's a genius. She definitely doesn't get it from her old man, though. It's actually a little embarrassing. She beats me at Scrabble constantly. To be fair, Scrabble is really hard. I can barely make good words when I have the whole alphabet in front of me, let alone seven letters. <laughs> Brian laughs. See? We can keep things friendly here. This is... 
perfectly pleasant. I could do this all night. Because I feel an innate need to impress Brian and prove that I'm better than him, obviously. That's the only reason. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Self-delusion. Well, that's relatable. Let's keep it moving. Ask about his dog. Yes, the dog. I want to know about the dog. So, you have a dog? Sure do. Hmm. I can't quite remember what he looks like. Oh, he's a little corgi. Always has a handkerchief around his neck. Yeah, I'm not getting it. I think I might need a visual reminder to jog my memory. If you happen to have any pictures of said dog? Maybe on your phone? Brian laughs. Uh, and if you wanted to see pictures of Maxwell, you could have just asked. Show me the goods, then. Brian pulls out his phone and flips through his entire album of dog pictures. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. What a good boy! I look around the room and take in all the kitschy decor, looking for something else to comment on. There's a gigantic fish hanging above Brian and I. I gesture to it. Cool fish. It's definitely fake. But really? <laughs> Everything in here is fake. That palm tree over there is just a ficus with plastic coconuts glued to it. I look over. Yeah, he's right. But I almost caught something like that fish once. Mine was bigger, though. Of course it was. Oh, really? Yep. I went on a trip to Hawaii maybe a decade ago. We were out on the sea for three days, catching fish, drinking beer, you know, guy stuff. We had a hot plate on the boat so we could sear the fish right after we caught it. Throw a little bit of salt and lemon on there. Oh, man. That was some of the best food I ever had. That actually sounds amazing. Well, it was the last day. Everyone had gone to bed already, but I was out there watching the stars. Had my line out, too. And all of a sudden, it just starts running. So I jump on the reel before it gets ripped off the, ro uh, the rod rack and start fighting with the damn thing. I'm out there for maybe an hour. Can't call out to my shipmates. It's just man against nature. Finally, I'm starting to tucker the guy out. I get him up to the surface, and I finally get a sight of it. The biggest marlin I've ever seen. Hemingway-esque. I get it onto the boat single-handedly. And you know what happens next? I finish my tea before it gets cold. That's what happens next. Ah. What happens next? Oh, the damn thing smacks me in the face with its tail. Knocks me out. I wake up the next morning on the deck. The fish gone. Never felt dumber. So it got away? I think there's another version of me that would have spent the rest of my life trying to catch that fish. Captain Ahab style. I'm sure Daisy would be supportive. <laughs> oh man, fishing's the life. Hasn't gone enough lately. You go fishing? Actually, I have a confession to make. Wait, what am I doing? Why am I having this inexplicable urge to be vulnerable with him? I can't tell him that I'm terrible at fishing. I lean in close. No, god damn it, no! <laughs> God damn it, you moron, me. I'm simply the best out there. Okay, since you're such a pro, I'm taking you fishing. You want to go fishing? Wait, don't answer that. Yes, you do. We're going fishing. Oh, no. Oh, uh, I don't know. Come on, it'll be a blast. I know the perfect little fishing spot. I'll bring some beers. We can just sit back, relax, and reel in some trout. We'll bring the kids with us. Come on. You know you want to. I sigh. I've been cornered. Yeah, yeah, okay. Brian gives me an exuberant high five. Yes, maybe we'll see who can catch the most fish so I can get you mowing my lawn. You can try to beat me, but they don't call me Sky and good at catching fish rice for nothing. Oh my god, I am spinning a web of lies that I fear will one day consume me. <laughs> oh lord. Hey. Sounds like it'll be a scrap. Brian and I finish our drinks and head outside. Till next time. Uh, the dad joke is right there. I have to take it. Also for catching more fish than Brian. You're krilling me with these puns, Skyn. Mull it over. You'll come around to the fish-related dad jokes in no time. Brian extends his hand and gives me a friendly but firm handshake. I see that competitive fire in his eyes. This is gonna become a whole thing, isn't it? Ah. Yeah, it absolutely is. <laughs> Once Brian takes over babysitting duties, Amanda walks home with me. She immediately plops down on the couch and flips on the TV. So, how was your hangout with Brian? He wasn't too spicy about his crushing defeat, was he? 
Nah, he was pretty gracious about it. Like, frustratingly gracious. Yeah, how dare that guy have some decency? Come on, Dad, he seems like a neat dude. I think so? I don't know. The guy loves a good competition. But then again, apparently, so do I. What did you and Daisy end up doing? Oh, we hunted for treasure a bit, but Daisy was really adamant about not digging without a permit, so we just watched some documentary about theoretical physics. I put her to bed and then sat around eating Brian's food. Mm -hmm. Don't tell him I said that. That's standard babysitting protocol, I believe. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I really like hanging out with. I really like hanging out with Daisy. She's super mature for her age. Yeah, Brian says she has a hard time relating to other kids. She kind of reminds me of you at her age. Although, she doesn't bite people as much as you did. Huh. I can't believe I'm finally the cool older kid. Feels good. You gonna hang out with Brian again? That's the thing. He wants to go fishing with me. Oh. I told him I was an amazing fisherman. Hmm. You hate fishing. I know. <laughs> I'm kind of panicking. I'm sure it'll be fine. All you have to do is wake up at the crack of dawn and sit silently in a boat in a lake for hours on end. With no promise of tangible reward. Your only companion being the fear and doubt you harbor deep within your heart. <laughs> Fishing's fun. You'll remind yourself. As the world darkens around you and you wonder if it's really you staring back at yourself in the lake's reflection. Or simply just the abyss. Yeah, laugh it up, Amanda. You're coming with us. Oh. It is my constitutional right to outright refuse this order. Daisy's coming too. Well, hmm. I bet I could convince Brian to bring his dog. Fine, sold, I'm in. Yeah, dog. That would work on me too. <laughs> All right, I'm bushed. Gonna call it a night. Don't stay up too late, okay? You got it, Pops. You know what? Let me mow your lawn this weekend. Okay, that sounded like innuendo. You've got dads. Indeed. Oh, hello. Side quest. <clears throat> Ugh. This is gonna crack my back a bit. <clears throat> Once again, I'm playing this game standing up because it's too damn hot in my room, and I need to have a fan on to not die. How y'all doing in chat? <laughs> You're discussing favorite dads. <laughs> well, can't say I blame you. Okay. So, side story then. Oh god, I have to remember Hugo's voice again. What the hell was Hugo's voice? I got it right yesterday. Hey, are you up to anything? Because it's American, and it's nasal, and the jaw is forward, so... Are you up to anything tonight? Because it needs to be a little bit of a nerd voice, I think. Hey, are you up to anything tonight? Hugo and I were planning on going to the Art Walk downtown and wondering if you would care to accompany us. I would normally write a letter longhand, but I've run out of distressed parchment paper. Whoa, why can't I see Damien and Hugo's chat? Am I a hacker? But I don't even have a hacker alias. The feds are gonna bust down my door any minute now. I've gotta destroy this computer. Skyen, this is a group chat. Oh, thank God. Do either of you guys know how to destroy a computer? You can run Derek's boot and... <laughs> you can run Derek's boot and nuke from a startup flash drive, but once you've done that, it's best to physically destroy the platters altogether. Uh, the, the Victorians were well-versed in information security. Skyen, do you want to go see some art or not? Damn it, I keep making him British by reflexive. Do you want to go see some art or not? Mm. Art is good. Let's go see art. Let's go see art. I'll get your voice right someday, Hugo. I swear it. Damien and Hugo invited me to the monthly art walk in downtown Maple Bay. I've never really been to one of these before, so I'm not quite sure what I'm in for. I think I'm here a bit early. I don't see Damien or Hugo around anywhere, and I feel just a little uncomfortable standing among all these fancy art people. Oh, there's Joseph. 
I turn around. It's Joseph. Joseph, what are you doing here? Joseph scoffs at me. What am I doing here? How could you ask me that? I'm obviously a huge art... Uh, uh, oh. Appreciate... Appreciator? Appreciatist? Oh. Okay, fine. Damien invited me to this art walk thing. I'm guessing he invited you too. Yep. Admittedly a little out of my depth here. Oh. Thank God, I thought it was going to be the art one out. Are you allowed to say that? Say what? You know, thank God. Ooh. Yup, I actually get double points when I say it since I'm a minister. Yeah. The points get you into heaven. That's how it works. Anyway, where are the guys? I look and spot Hugo and Damien, who seem to have just arrived at the gallery. Good eve, good eve, good eve. <laughs> Evening, friends. Oh. Who's ready for some art? <laughs> the art is dead and nothing is real. I think I have to admit ignorance here. Yeah. I have no idea what I'm in for. Uh, same. Hey. All you have to know is that if you're ever feeling overwhelmed, there's generally always a table that has free wine and cheese. I like art now. Oh. <laughs> I've got the table in my sights. Now you'll excuse me. I'm going to go help myself some, some tiny wines. See, I'm hungry right now, so cheese sounds really appealing. But seeing Damien be weird and awkward in public with Hugo would also be quite fun. Plus, I get to practice my Hugo voice so that it's finally ready for when we do the route with him. Hmm. Think, think. Okay, let's just go get the, get the cheese, because... I think I need to cheese it up before I delve into art appreciation. Good idea. Appreciating art does burn a lot of calories. Gotta carb up on these crackers. Joseph and I sidle up to the snack table. There's a pretty nice spread of little plastic cups and white wine, some crackers, grapes, and cheese. Oh. This is more my speed. We eat a couple of cheese cubes in silence. These are really good. Yeah, yeah I didn't eat dinner. I think I could probably just fill up on snacks if I'm sneaky about it. I already ate dinner, but I will... Always have room for cheese. Oh. I'm going in for more crackers. Cover me. I shield Joseph from the small crowd of mild-mannered art people milling around the room. I don't think anyone's paying attention. We should probably get back to Damien and Hugo. Oh. Right. Let me just fill this cup with cheese first. For the road. Road cheese? Oh. The best kind. He's becoming more and more snacklepuss by the moment. Oh, hello. Delighted, even. <laughs> we leave the first gallery and walk a few minutes before we reach another one. This gallery is a bit more crowded. Huge paintings of... I'm not really sure hang the, hung on the walls. Oh, oh jeez. What am I looking oh. at here? This is abstract art. I think the more important question is, what does this art mean to you? I stare at the painting, concentrating as hard as I can on, on its meaning. <laughs> it's a butt... <laughs> Uh, let's go with an answer that's actually a little bit genuine. Or at least looks like one. The gestures, the color, they remind me of my childhood, of my parents. Intriguing that you discover something so personal in an image so non-specific, Sky. And may I ask you to say a little more? Just kidding, it's a butt. <laughs> These vivid symbol forms communicate a solemnity that is betrayed by the raw expressiveness of the brushwork, which... In a way, he speaks to the essential nature of the human experience. Oh, come on, you're pulling that out of your ass. Okay, listen, time for another rant. We're going to stop here until I can discuss, uh, tell all of you how to deal with stuff like this. Abstract, modern, and especially postmodern art is part of, part of the thing that a lot of people get so angry about, and understandably so, is that it's art that refuses to communicate its own meaning. It's not a portrait of anything. It's not a picture of anything. You got artists like uh, Rothko, Pollock... And people like that, like creating art that is simply just like a mess of color on a canvas with no particular expression, no subject, no ex no particular form. And it's very easy to look at that and go, but like Pollock literally just dripped some shit on a canvas. That doesn't mean anything. That isn't anything. Anyone could do that. And it's very easy to look at a Rothko painting also and say the same thing. Like he's just arranging blocks of color. And it's the same thing with goddamn Mondrian, right? But the point there isn't... <clears throat> Like, to, to observe a representation of a particular subject. It's not, the point isn't to observe a, re a representation of a particular idea or anything along those lines. The point is to observe 
a feeling, an emotion. Like if if what you're supposed that if you want to appreciate it, just look at it and be open to it. like these colors, this combination, what what's the thing that comes to mind? What does it remind you of? Is there something in your head that it's it it pushes on? It's some feeling it reminds you of, a moment, a memory. And if there isn't, that's okay. That's valid. You're not stupid. You're not wrong. You're not appreciating art poorly. You're not sub-intellectual. You're not unsophisticated. If it doesn't speak to you, that's okay. That is also part of the point, is that it doesn't speak to everyone. That it's not, like, not everybody sees anything in it. And that's fine. It's completely fine. And the trouble with art snobbery is that there are some people out there who's like, oh, you can't appreciate this painting. Well, you must be intellectually deficient and stupid and unsophisticated, and I alone have the sophisticated human soul who can appreciate true art. Those people are dickheads, and they're shitbags, and they make art worse for absolutely everybody, because this stuff has the power to move you. I, just, I promise you, if you go to a good Rothko exhibition, and you stand in front of a painting like that at the distance that Rothko wanted you to stand, which is three inches away, very close, and you let that thing in, you let those colors in, they will fuck with your head. They will make you feel things, but first you have to not be f afraid of being unsophisticated. You have to not be afraid of approaching it wrong or not getting the sophisticated highfalutin meanings and knowing the academic terminology and blah, blah, blah. All that bullshit is just... That's just wank. The picture itself is enough. And your experience of the picture is enough. Like, it's, ugh, this is something I get fired up about. Because I don't like that my character here is clearly pulling bullshit out of his ass instead of just relating to the picture. Anyway, let's move on with the actual thing. <laughs> The scars left by the passage of time and the turmoil of the contemporary life are both contextualized and deepened by the rose-colored echoes of pre-edipal consciousness. Oh my god! Next time I get an opportunity, I'm just gonna say it's a butt. Because that's more honest. A butt is more honest, honestly. Slow down there, Sky, and do us a favor and keep it simple. It's a butt. Thank um. you! <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a butt. I... Ah. Hmm. While a valid assessment, I can't help but feel feeling your initial judgment may be closer to the artist's intentions. Maybe you're underestimating how much the artist like butts. <laughs> you are a servant of the Lord. We are all God's creatures, even butts. Hmm. Comparing this piece to the artist's body of work, I'm pretty sure this represents the sense of isolation he feels creating traditional abstract artwork in a field that's rapidly moving towards digitization. Wow, how do you figure that? That's what it says on the placard. Oh. Mm -hmm. Let's look at a few more of these. We walk around the gallery, sampling some more of the artist's work. I almost hate to say it, but abstract art is kind of growing on me. It's interesting that the artist chooses not to let their work be defined by... What's the word? Realism? Realism. As we're looking at one of the paintings, a patron scoffs loudly. Psh, I could do that. Mm. Excuse me. What? Hugo, not here. Hmm. No, come back here. The patron walks away, not noticing Hugo fuming right next hmm. to him. You say you could do that, but you didn't. You don't seem to have the intellectual depth or artistic skill to execute a piece of, fra of a fraction of an impressive. To execute a piece even as fraction as impressive as this one. I'm oh, Hugo angry. after my... <laughs> I'm just disappointed. Art is the truest expression of the self, and it seems like yourself is, is bad, so your art would be bad. Hugo's insult game isn't the best, but there's no denying his passion. Damien is holding him back at this point. <laughs> friend, friend, he's not worth it. Mm. Hugo manages to cool down. He smooths his jacket. I don't know. I'm sorry, I just love arts. <clears throat> I keep making him British. I just love art so very much. We know, buddy. I pat Hugo on the shoulder. You know what would ease the mood? Is it cheese? No. Oh. It's wine and cheese. Mm. Cosigned! The four of us head over to the wine and cheese table, which, thankfully, is grounded in realism and is actual wine and cheese. Ah. We got one last stop on the tour. You lot filling up for it? Is it going to be any weirder than this art? Yeah. It is absolutely weirder than this art. Let's do it. Hey. Damien, Hugo, Joseph, and I walk over to a performance in the street. Several masked performers and leotards undulate wildly on the ground, screaming both at each other and us. So, quick question. Oh. Shoot. What is happening? Yeah. I second this mm. question. Performance art. 
What does it mean? Again, I pose the very same question to you, Mr. Rice. <laughs> they really like screaming. And that they do, but I'm not sure if that encompasses the whole of their performance. What do you think they're trying to say? I believe it's less about what they're saying and more about why they're saying it. I think there's something special about performance art. With almost every form of other form of art, music, painting, photography, the artist uses their medium as a conduct for their emotions. With performance art, the medium is the artist. It's the purest expression of raw human emotion. It's art as catharsis. That's beautiful, Damien. So what you're saying is, if I start making really loud fart noises right now, it's art as long as I, like, really mean it? Damien fixes him with a hard stare. <laughs> I was gonna start making fart noises, but based on the look on your face, that joke isn't gonna play well with this crowd. Oh. <laughs> Wise. Oh. We watch the rest of the performance as earnestly as we can and clap politely after the dancers scream their way off stage. Yeah, I think I'm all arted out. Agreed. We all decide to walk home together. Ah. We make our way back to this cul-de-sac, tiny wine and tiny cheese sloshing around in my stomach. I think what I've learned tonight, and that's just what I've learned about art, which was nice and extremely informative, but I think what I've learned tonight is when you put a tiny bunch of tiny wine and cheeses together, it eventually becomes regular wine and regular cheese, followed by too much wine and too much cheese. And the tiny cheese lulled me into a false sense of security. I felt safe with the tiny cheese. Wax wings too close mm -hmm. to the sun. Cheese wings? Those would melt in the sun too, and I feel like it's more appropriate imagery. <laughs> Plus, it'd be delicious. A nice Emmenthaler, possibly. Oh. Hey, if you guys were painters, what would you paint? Oh. I actually dapple in oils. I best to paint landscapes. I'm not very good, but it's a nice way to pass the time. Oh. I think I would focus on personal portraits of people in unique professions, like, for example, luchadors. Oh. I think I'd paint boats. No, no, wait, that's not Damien. I think I'll paint... Yeah. I think i paint boats, seascapes, maybe some lighthouses even. Mostly boats. Really? Mm. Yeah, I'm surprised you're choosing boats in favor of the long history of religious imagery and artwork. Mm. What? Boats are cool. Mm. What about you, Skyne? <laughs> Let's go with food artistry. Ah. I'd probably do still lives of various foods, bowls of fruit, maybe some bread in there. <laughs> Would there be cheese involved? See, I thought about that, and no. I can't stare at a pile of cheese for eight hours without eating some of it, and that would ruin the whole thing. Oh. Yeah, excellent. Excellent point. We finally get to the cul-de-sac. All right, boys, good art. Good art. Hmm. Agreed. See you guys around? Whether you want to or not, we're all neighbors, after all. I made, I made Joseph British there. Good lord, when there's four of them, I keep mixing up the voices. I head inside to deal with my ines inevitable cheese over. <laughs> Welcome. You've got dads. Hockey day. Moving on with Brian. The jackass. All righty. Ah. Hey, Daisy and I are going fishing tomorrow. Are you in or out? Oh no, I've been dreading this day. I accidentally boasted about my abilities as a fisherman to Brian and now he's challenging me to another dad off. I've been doing my fishing research online, but I'm nowhere close to being an expert. Still though, I have to accept. I type back to Brian. Sounds great, man! Super excited to catch all those fish! And my lawn could use another good mowing. That'll show him. Uh, just a sec, you're gonna hear a weird noise. Ugh, my back. Ugh, my back has finally told me that standing up and, get and playing is no longer gonna be an option, so I have... Ugh. I have, uh, lowered my desk back down. And we'll keep going in a nice chair. Brian responds back, letting me know that tomorrow he'll pick it up as <laughs> pick us up at an hour I had previously forgotten existed. Man, that's gonna be a rough start. 
Amanda? Amanda comes into the room from the kitchen, eating a cheese stick by biting it off piece by piece, like some kind of monster. I didn't raise you like that. What? It's called string cheese and not chumpy cheese for a reason, Amanda. Ugh. Did you just call me in here to cr criticize my controversial cheese eating technique or what? No, Amanda, we have to go fishing tomorrow. Well, you have to go fishing. I get to play with Brian's dog. How do I become a master of fishing overnight? You went fishing in the Girl Scouts, didn't you? Mm. Nope, my stint in the Scouts was pure and brief and purely transactional. I thought I could get free cookies, but I didn't know that I had to, like, be outside and tie knots and stuff. But I have to beat Brian. Mm. Dad, let me tell you a story. Do you remember last summer how I applied for a job at that coffee shop across town? Uh, give me a refresher? During the interview, they asked me if I knew how to work an espresso machine, and really wanted the job, so I lied and said yes. On that first morning, there was a line out the door, and within half an hour, I severely burnt my hand, and they turned me to go home and never come back. I still have a scar from that. Of course I don't remember. What does that have to do with fishing? The burn is a metaphor, Dad. I don't get it. Mm. You can lead a horse to water. What do horses have to do with fish? And burns? Mm -hmm. Dad, please, I don't get your obsession with competing against Brian. You wouldn't understand. It's a dad thing. Please try explaining it to me. Okay, Brian's just... He just thinks that he's so much better than me, and he purposefully reminds me of that whenever he can. It's like he has to one-up me. I have to beat him at his own game. Is that what you think is happening here? No, Amanda. Okay, good. I know that's what's happening. <sighs> All right, Pops. We should both be getting some sleep. See you in the morning? Night, Panda. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Again with the runny nose. I don't know where it comes from. I brush my teeth and throw on some pajamas. I climb into bed, set my alarm, and close my eyes. Okay, sleep. I am wide awake. I can't help but think about the last time I went fishing, hoping that there's something I can glean from it to give me an edge over Brian. I was about nine years old. My dad woke me up one morning and told me to get dressed and meet him downstairs. It was still dark out. I had no idea what was going on, but before I knew it, we were both alone on a freezing cold lake. I had to stay there for hours while it got hot and muggy, the air thick with bugs. I picked up mosquito bites while my dad sat in stony silence, fishing pole in one hand and beer in the other. We didn't catch anything. On the long drive home, my ba father bought me a pa pack of cigarettes and didn't say a thing. That didn't help, and I think I have some repressed sadness about my father. I'll deal with that later. I'm sitting on a boat in the middle of a body of water. I can't see any land, but I know it's a lake. The water is placid and still. I'm holding a fishing pole. I don't understand why, but it feels like my life depends on catching fish right now. I cast my lure into the water and wait, wait and wait. My whole being is filled with hopelessness as I watch the line disappear into the depths below. You used the wrong lure. I look up and see my father, just as he looked that one cold morning, disapproving. I'm panicking now. I pull the lure up and try to grab a different one, but all of the lures in my tackle box are the exact same. I look up to my father for guidance, but he's gone. I try casting again, but I can't hold my footing. My boat tips over and I fall into the water. Sinking further and further, I see the multitudes of fish that have been lying just below the surface, all swimming around me as if to taunt me. One fish swims up to me. He has Brian's eyes. This is getting creepy. You gotta use a neutral buoyancy lure if you're gonna try to catch trout, buddy. I jolt awake to the sound of my alarm. <laughs> it's fishing day. That would explain the weird dream. I groggily slip on, slip on clothes and get ready. Where the hell did the chat go? God damn it, YouTube. Thank you. I spot Amanda's door half open and see her still curled up in a mountain of blankets. Walking over to her bed, I give her a tiny kiss on the forehead. Fishing day, kiddo. You ready? Uh, no. <laughs> well, you gotta get up. I can't do this without you. Also, stop sleeping in your clothes. Amanda pulls her comforter over her head. Ever. 
Amanda. I'll get up in a minute. Alright, Brian should be here in 20, so you better not just go back to sleep. Amanda sticks her hands through the blanket to wave me away. I leave her room and make myself some coffee and another cup with lots of cream and sugar for Amanda whenever she gets up. Amanda eventually wanders in and chucks her coffee while I do word jumbles. I hear the doorbell ring. That must be Brian. Still robbing our eyes, we walk outside to see Brian. He's decked out in fishing gear. Daisy's falling asleep next to him. Ah. Early bird gets the worm, buddy. You ready to fish? I was born ready. My eyes narrow in on Brian. It's a good day to die. Hop on in, guys. Let's get this fishing party started. I walk over to the driver's side door and open it. <laughs> Brian's dog immediately hops into the driver's seat, wagging his tail furiously. Can I see your license, sir? <laughs> Maxwell, let's sky and sit. Maxwell obediently hops into the back to cuddle with Daisy. Amanda settles in next to Maxwell, and Daisy immediately falls asleep. Yeah, the Discord noises are from my laptop, which I've also got in front of me. Let me just turn that off. You ready for an adventure? I'm ready for glory! <laughs> I struggle to stay awake as we drive to the outskirts of town. Country music plays quietly from the radio as I watch trees pass by. So where exactly are we headed? It's about an hour north of here. Little spot I've been going to since I was a kid. My dad used to take me up there all the time. I don't think anyone else knows about it. I brought everything we need so we can catch some trout, have a nice little fire, and enjoy the nature. My, uh, my fishing pole is in the shop, getting it tuned up. Do you maybe have an extra I could borrow? But of course, it's probably not as nice as it sounds like yours is, though. Right. I am digging a hole here. I stare out at the forest lining the highway. The sun is just barely over the horizon, scattering dusky pink light through the trees. For a split second, I spot a deer grazing on the side of the road before it leaps back into the brush. After a nice quiet drive, Brian eventually tells me to pull off the highway and onto a dirt road. The car bumps along until we reach a clearing that opens up onto a magnificent lake. Well, here we are. I step out of the car and help Brian unload our gear as Maxwell runs around us barking. The kids wake up and wander to the shore, where Daisy tries to teach Amanda how to skip rocks. Brian and I carry the tackle boxes and cooler down to the edge of the lake where he has a cano canoe waiting. Ah, great, it's still in one piece. Hold on, help me out with Maxwell. I help Brian place a tiny dog-sized life vest onto Maxwell. <laughs> Alright, your turn. Brian hands me a lime green life vest. Yeah, alright. If I fall in, I'm counting on you to rescue me. <laughs> Suit yourself. Brian turns to Amanda and Daisy, who are still skipping rocks. Your kids want to fish? Dad. I'm good with just throwing rocks into the water. Amanda hurls a rock into the pond with gusto. Yeah, take that, water! Amanda, you're supposed to be skipping them. Huh? Is that what we're doing? Daisy, don't you want to fish? I think catching fish is kind of inhumane. We're going to go explore the woods and look at bugs and stuff. All right, be safe. Don't go too far. Brian puts the life vest around himself, and we throw all of our equipment into the canoe. Maxwell happily jumps in and takes his place, looking out over the front of the boat. I get into the canoe as Brian shoves off. We paddle together to get ourselves into the middle of the lake. Most freshwater... Oh, <clears throat> it's Brian talking. Most freshwater fish usually feed at dusk and dawn, which is why I had to get you up so early. Yeah, I know. That's pretty common fisherman knowledge, after all. Fisherman knowledge that I am knowledgeable about. Still a gambling man? You know it. Let's see who can catch more fish. You can catch more than one? You can catch more than one? Oh, that was not him. That was the narration. Sounds easy enough to me. What's on the line? Besides all the fish I'm going to catch, obviously. <laughs> I was thinking something a little more high stakes than mowing the lawn. Custody of our children? More than that, let's say, if I win, I get your weed whacker. The Whackmaster 2000. That's a limited edition. But if you win, you get my pole saw, the Reach and Cut 3000. The cordless version? That's the one. Shit, the Reach and Cut is state of the art. My weed whacker is a prized possession, but oh, there are those hard-to-reach branches at the back of the yard that have been begging for a pruning. 
You're on. We shake on it. I suddenly remember that I don't know how to fish. My foolish fatherly pride will one day be my undoing. I watch as Brian ties a lure and does some stuff. Oh, does some stuff I can't quite follow with his fishing pole. He casts into the lake. Oh boy. Now I have to do that. I stare down at the tackle box and the pole in my hand. <laughs> Insult the fish. <laughs> uh, let's just put some bait on the hook. I fish a worm from the styrofoam container, container that Brian bought, brought. It's uh, slippery, but I think I can get it onto the hook if I just focus. Oh god, I'm bleeding. Oh god, the blood's everywhere. The worm is not on the hook. Need some help? No, I meant to do that. The blood attracts the fish. They can smell it up to a mile away, you know. I think that's sharks. No, it's definitely fish. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> Let's at least try. I take my pole and try to tie an elaborate looking knot to impress Brian. The classic hunter's bend. I learned that one in my youth. Yep. This one isn't coming apart anytime soon. With this knot, I will cast my heavenly line upon the unsuspecting water and deliver unto us a bountiful harvest. I look over to Brian. He doesn't seem to be paying attention. Let's cast this sucker. I pull my rod back and launch the lure as hard as I can. And the lure flies off the line and sails far, far away, landing in the lake with a loud sploosh. Sorry, I judged the wind speed wrong. This cold air drives the pressure down. <laughs> Go ahead and take my pole. I know it's hard switching to a new pole you're not used to. I'll fix up another lure. Brian hands me his pole with a smile and I just sit there feeling like an idiot. Yeah, you should, you moron! God damn it. I can't really relate much to this particular storyline because I don't have that competitive streak. Fishing around here is easy. They group up. All you gotta do is line up three of the same species and reel them in. Okay, thank God. I need to match three of the same species? I can't tell which fish is, fish is which. Fish. Okay, so what do I... Do? Oh, okay, so it's a... That's the walleye. They typically feed at dusk or dawn or during rough weather, and they have better eyesight than most fish. Right, okay. So you have a limited amount of time to figure this crap out. Okay. So, uh, let's get into it. A rainbow trout, huh? Catch of the day. Catch of the day. Mm. Nice man. Match of the day. Damn it. Okay. All right, uh, God, it's hard to tell these things apart. Match of the day. Match of the day. Nice catch. Uh, shit. Okay. Uh, is there anything anywhere? Yeah. There. And I'm guessing the rainbow trout is extra special, valuable. Ah, ran out of moves, oh, or ran out of time. Good work. Well, I managed to win the game, <laughs> I guess. Wow, this is way tougher than I thought. I look over to Brian, who's smiling and obviously enjoying his time out here in the lake. I will crush him. Suddenly, the fishing pole jumps in my hand. I reflexively tug upwards. I think I got something big. The tip of the pole dips down repeatedly and the line starts to run. <laughs> Reel it in. I finally get the fish right up next to the boat. It's a long, beautiful rainbow trout. Brian hands me a net. It's all yours. 
I lean down and notice that my hands are shaking with excitement. This fish is bigger than all the ones Brian's caught. That pole saw is mine! All my- The entire canoe tips over with me. I find myself sinking into the lake. I should have taken the life vest. WHY WASN'T I ve WEARING A LIFE VEST?! All of a sudden, I'm embraced under the water and pulled into Brian's arms. Finally dragged upwards, sputtering water. All of our gear floats on the surface. Maxwell doggy paddles around us in circles, having a great time. Aww. You alright? Does that count as one? Uh. Well, seeing as all of our fish are now swimming safely back in the lake, I guess so. Brian laughs. Let's get you to shore. Brian and I flip the cano canoe back over and fill it with our now soaking wet gear. Okay, kids, just a little safety... Never, ever, ever go sailing without a life vest. Never. Not kidding about this. <laughs> Once we get to the beat, Okay, I guess that's what we're doing now. Maxwell darts off into the woods. Brian takes off his shirt. Dots of lake water glisten in the sun across his strong back. <laughs> Man, all the general contracting must have built that guy like an ox. I hope he doesn't notice me staring. I'm gonna get a fire going so we can dry off. Wanna hand me yours? I, uh, yes, okay. I reluctantly take off my own shirt and toss it to Brian. I suddenly wish I had done more sit-ups in my life. Or any sit-ups at all. Another thing you've bested me in, stupid sexy Brian. Oh man, I should have given him a Flanders voice. Howdy doody, neighbor. Might as well fry that shirt up. Seems like it's the only lunch we'll have. That day's young, we can fish from the shore. Diddly! <laughs> Once Brian gets the fire going, I sit and try to dry off my pants. Brian sets a couple of lures out by the water's edge. We're probably gonna have to put the kibosh on the competition for now. Until another day, my stomach growls. You hungry? Oh, I'm fine. Brian reaches into his cargo shorts and pulls out a few granola, granola hey. bars. I have a small child. I am flushed with snacks. I see the chat is enjoying shirtless Brian. <laughs> Brian joins me by the fire and I accept uh, the cargo short granola. And now we're back to waiting. Where did the girls get off to? Shouldn't they be back by now? I uh, wouldn't worry about it too much. They're a couple of smart kids. That's what I'm worried about. They're too smart. They've probably established a small rural government by now and by at this point and installed themselves as leaders. I take a look around the sun cresting the tree line, casting the entire lake in a warm golden glow. The forest seems to be coming alive now. Birds chirp in the distance. Well, nature is beautiful. A mosquito bite me. bites me. I slap my neck and curse. Nature sucks! Here you go, bud. Brian hands me a bottle of buck spray. I begrudgingly take it and douse myself. Ugh, I've always hated how this stuff smells. Really? I've always kind of liked it. Reminds me of being outside. Maybe you and I have different sentiments on the outdoors. Maxwell comes bounding up to me, a huge stick in his mouth. He drops it at my feet and looks at me expectantly. Why would you do that? Why would anyone ever do that to a dog? The fake art throw is funny, though. I wind up and pretend to throw the stick. Maxwell runs away for a second, then looks around, confused. <laughs> Brian and I laugh. I toss the stick to Maxwell for real, and he jumps up to catch it in his mouth. Hey. Isn't it a little messed up that we're taking advantage of a dog's inherent trust in humans for our own amusement? Mm. Maxwell, get over here. I gotta make it up to you. It's time for the pets. What's the plan? Rub that belly. <laughs> Maxwell rolls over and lets me rub his belly. He wiggles on the grass, clearly loving it. Aww. I feel like a bit of a third wheel here. Where are my belly rubs? <laughs> I, uh, um, <clears throat> huh. I'm so flustered that I can barely say anything. I just focus on petting Maxwell and hope Brian doesn't notice how much I'm sweating. Ha! <laughs> oh, my character apparently is a gay disaster. While I'm playing with Maxwell, fish begin routinely pulling on Brian's lines. I watch Brian effortlessly fillet the fish, squeezing a bit of lemon on them and frying them up in a cast iron pan. Before we know it, we have a fit feast fit for a couple of shirtless dudes. Amanda and Daisy emerge from the woods, looking totally unscathed. Wow, Dadbot Patrol, I'm gonna have to issue you both a citation and demand you put your shirts on. There are children present. Brian tosses me my now dry shirt. I pull it over my head, thankful that I will no longer be distracted by Brian and his pecs. <laughs> Where have you guys been? Studying entomology. What? We were playing with bugs. 
Hmm. I expected you guys to be more covered in, like, mud and stuff. Daisy looks offended. What do you take me for, a child? Amanda puts a hand on Daisy's shoulder. <sighs> right. <laughs> we take a seat around the fire and Brian serves us all generous piles of fish on our paper plates. It's absolutely delicious. Why does he have to be good at everything? Well... Fish taste okay. Daisy and Amanda both nod furiously, mouths full of fish. It's incredible. I've never had fish this good. Yeah, it's great. All Harding family recipe. Mm. Why are your pants wet? Well, Amanda, we were out there on the lake and then... And then I accidentally tipped over that boat. Don't worry, all of the gear floated to the surface so we didn't lose anything. Right, Skyn? I... Yeah, that's exactly what happened. I can't believe he just covered for me. <laughs> Gosh, he even out-humbles me. He's trying to beat me at everything, including my world-famous sense of humility. <laughs> I think I see what's going on here, though. We finish our fish and end up playing catch with Maxwell for a little while before we decide to head out. After cleaning up the camp, we pack the sta up the station wagon and let Maxwell into the back seat. The poor pup falls asleep in a cuddle puddle with Amanda and Daisy. They've had a long day. Been an old deal today, bud. Let me drive you guys home. I want to prove that I'm the mo most awake dad on the block, but yeah, I'm beat. Fine. As we drive away, I take one last look at the lake disappearing behind us and smile. I rest my head against the window and the low rumble of the dirt road beneath us lulls me into a peaceful sleep. Hey, sleepyhead. I open my eyes and realize I had dozed off in the car. I self-consciously wipe a bit of drool off my chin. Ha! <laughs> oh, hey, I was... resting my eyes? Uh, just in case we suddenly have to jump into any sort of a conflict. So I'm super awake for it. And ready to fight with my strong arms. <laughs> it's all good. You earned some rest, buddy. Thanks for coming out with us today. I had a lot of fun with you. Thanks for inviting us. I also had fun, actually. Glad to hear it. Take it easy, yeah? You too. Take it the easiest. Brian chuckles to himself as he unloads the car. Amanda and I get inside and immediately collapse onto the couch. Long day. I was so close to that pole saw. Huh? Pole saw? Yeah, Brian and I were competing to see who could catch the most fish and... Mm. Ah, stop. Why do you care so much? Amanda Panda, just look at the guy. He so obviously got my number and he's rubbing my face in it. Ugh. Dad, I love you, mm. but you're kind of dumb sometimes. Dumb? Or clearly the superior dad. You know what? I don't have any of the energy required to properly unpack your weird fixation with asserting your masculinity. I'm going to bed. Night. Amanda slides off the couch and face down onto the floor. <laughs> I am a tired slug. Amanda, that floor is disgusting. I don't care. Well, night, honey. Night, pops. <laughs> so, uh, why is that so loud? You sure know how to make a dad blush. Indeed. Welcome. So I think I see what's going on here. <laughs> Ultimately. Like it, at least insofar as I can I can make up from the communication that's being given here, what's going on here is my character has some unresolved feeling about their own dad. And some inadequacy. And they're projecting it very, very, very hard onto Brian. Hmm. Let's see. How long have we been going? Two hours. Okay, we've got time. Hi, this is Steven from Dapmason. I am out in front with your delivery. Oh, okay, right. I'll be right down. Wait, no, sorry. Need to put on pants first. I can't find my pants, but I'm wrapped from waist down in a duvet. Are you cool with that? I can come back tomorrow. No, 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 no. Wait, I'll be right down. I found some sensible cat prees. <laughs> What is this? Ooh, I got a package. I wonder what it is. Ooh, I bet that's it's that package of socks I ordered. I open up the box and start pu pulling the packing peanuts out. Man, these socks reek. 
Okay, that is definitely not socks. It's... butterflies? Oh boy, I don't almost don't even want to know what Amanda was planning on doing with these. Hey Amanda, your box of dead butterflies is here. What's up, are you sacrificing them? What? You ordered butterflies? You can order dead butterflies online? Wait, so these aren't yours? Uh, no, but I'm definitely ordering some right now. Okay. Love you. I take a look at the box again. Oh, this is addressed to Damien's house. Well, we'll give it to Damien, obviously. I should take it over to him. I jog over to Damien's house with the box. I pull uh, hit back his door knocker, but suddenly the door opens. Mr. Rice, to what do I owe the pleasure? Whoa, how do you know I was about to knock? Uh, well, I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, I think this got delivered to my house by mistake. I hand him the box and his face lights up. Oh, what a wonderful surprise. I was just about to send a strongly worded letter to the courier service about this. Many thanks. I... Not to pry, but what are you going to do with those butterflies? Would you like to see? Well, I mean, mm. We've already gone on the second date with Damien in this playthrough, so how the hell am I surprised about him collecting butterflies at this point? Alarm bell is ringing in my head. This is how you die, Sky and Rise. Again, this only really works if you haven't been on any dates with Damien yet. Hmm. Sure! Damien leads me into his study where he set up some sort of workstation. Above his desk is a wall of pinned butterflies, moths, and beetles. Oh, wow, that's really something, Damien. Oh. I'm quite proud of my little collection. <coughs> you do all this yourself? Of course. I find it rather relaxing. How do you... Hmm. It's simple. Here, let me show you. Hmm. These aren't quite ready yet. They'll need to be rehydrated overnight so they're easy to work with. I have some over here that are ready to pin. Damien takes a seat at his desk while I hover behind him. He picks up a little triangular paper package and snips off the edges. He pulls out an all-black butterfly and shows it to me. I'm rather excited about this one. It's a turquoise swallowtail. He gently opens the wings, spreading the butterfly out on the table. The backs of the wings are a gorgeous iridescent green color. Oh, and the pigment on this one is so nice, too. Anyways, picking a butterfly is actually rather simple. It just requires a delicate touch. First, I'll put a pin through the thorax. Damien slides a pin through the middle of the butterfly and places the butterfly on a piece of styrofoam. He carefully arranges the antennae with forceps and begins placing paper and more pins on and around it. He does this so effortlessly that it's almost hypnotic. Oh. I have a frame here that I think this one will look quite pretty in, but I'll need to let it sit for a couple of days until it's ready. And then what? Hmm. I remove all the pins and put it on the display with the others. I take a closer look at Damien's collection. One with bright blue wings keeps drawing my eye. This one's so pretty. Damien takes it off the wall. Uh. Ah, yes, that's a blue morpho. One of my favorites, too. He hands the small frame to me. Yeah, I think this would look lovely in your home. Oh, I couldn't take this. I insist. Believe me, I have more than enough. Well, thank you. If you ever have an interest in pinning some insects yourself, you know where to find me. <laughs> I think I'll leave that up to you. I feel like I'd probably break them in half with my butter fingers. Uh. Nonsense, you have beautiful steady hands. It would make a fine taxidermist. Am I blushing? Damien walks me to the door and gives me a warm smile as I leave. Oh. Do take care of yourself, Skyen. Thanks for allowing me to share my odd little hobby with you. Welcome. You've got dads. But yeah, that's a lovely little yet, but it's a little bit out of order with the way that we've been playing the game so far. I don't know if the game expects you to go Craig, Matt, Brian, Robert, Damien, Hugo, and then Joseph, like in that order or something. Anyway. So, we're about to finish the Brian route, but I need a break for just a sec, so hang on.
Okay, <clears throat> sorry, I, I need to do some things. Close a window, put on some, uh, uh, what do you call it, slippers. And also eat a little bit of food, because I was starving. <sighs> anyway, uh, 
Nope, that's not the one. That was the one. Oh, oh, there was a, there was a, there was a thing while I was gone, I think. Oh yes, Judy donated $5. I'm not caught up to the stream, but here's a little gift for future me to hear about it later. Hope future or I guess current you is having fun. Thank you very much. I absolutely am. You just got a little peek at my desktop there. <laughs> <clears throat> so, where were we? Right, we were about to romance the large man. Ugh. And I have some food in my stomach now, so I feel better. I spend the day lounging around the house in my bathrobe and slippers, committed to enjoying my day off as a testament to dad laziness around the world. What job do you do? Third coffee of the day and I'm doing my second word jumble in pen. Man, this is the life. Hey, this one spells door. Uh. You're still taking me to the fair later, right? There's a fair? Oh. Dad is literally around the corner from us. It's not ringing a bell. I came home yesterday with cotton candy. Nope, nothing. Ugh. I gave you a teddy bear that I won, specifically stating where and when I got it. Mm. Seriously? Amanda walks to the windowsill and slides the drapes open. There's a big Ferris wheel in the distance. Oh, right. That one. I thought you meant another carnival. You're coming with me tonight, right? Gosh, honey, I don't know. I've got all this... I look down in the mug of coffee and word jumble in my hands. Pressing business I need to attend to. Amanda points to my word jumble. Park dog clock cereal. I knew that. I totally knew that. The secret word that they all spell out is pool. Hey, you're pretty good at this. Mm -hmm. Now you don't have an excuse. You're coming with me. Amanda pushes me into my bedroom and forces me to change out of my bathrobe. Wear something nice. I want some arm candy tonight. Got it. Mm. And no flip-flops. Not after last time. We don't talk about last time. <laughs> Amanda and I step outside and follow the faint sound of carnival music. So, what's the first thing you're gonna do at the fair? Huh. Eat greasy food? Like, deep fry everything and put it in my mouth. I don't even- I don't care if it's tasty and tasty to start with. I believe that the deep frying process can transmute any non-tasty thing into a tasty thing. Please don't throw up this oh. time. I know my limits. You said that last time. I was still calibrating. I'm dialed in now. You'll ride the rides with me, right? If you're looking for someone to write scary rides with, that's a straight veto from the dad constituency. <laughs> However, I'm happy to stand at the fence and take bur blurry pictures of you riding the rides, as per dad custom. Define scary rides. Anything that moves. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Well, you're no fun. Mm. Maybe I'll find someone at the carnival who'll go with me. Wouldn't that be a surprise? Yeah, maybe one of your friends from school will be there. Like, uh, who's the one with the eyebrows? Mm -hmm. Teresa? She got mono. Uh, what about the one who vapes? Alex got suspended for vaping in the school bathroom. Well, I hear carnival rides as fun as a solo rider. But then I'll have no one to puke on. Or will I? What? Hey, look, we're here. Eh? The carnival is packed with people from all over town tonight. Screaming kids running around with cotton candy and buckets of soda clutched in their grubby fists. Colorful lights flash all around us. I feel like just smelling the air will clog my arteries. Hey, let's go over to these greedy sea food carts first. Amanda leads me by the hand in what seems like a very specific direction. I know my favorite runs around here somewhere. Wait a second, is that Brian? Wow, look who it is. Sure enough, it's Brian and his daughter Daisy. Brian has the same confused look on his face I'm sure I have. Hmm. What a coincidence that we all happen to be here at the same time in the same exact place. Wow, this is so weird. Can you believe we just happened to come to the carnival on the same night at the same time? Hmm. Yeah, Daisy, that is so strange. How bizarre. Ryan? Skyen? I can feel my competitive fire burning inside me again. Last we met, Brian had made a fool of me by besting me at fishing and then out-humbling me in front of my very own daughter. I still want that pole saw. Oh. There's plenty of midway games here. Yes. Okay, how about we hang out as a team and explore the carnival together? 
Yes, Amanda, that sounds like an amazing idea. Let's all go and do stuff. Together. Amanda and I follow Brian and Daisy as they lead us towards some rides. Can't believe Brian is here. Huh. Dad, you need to relax. Daisy and I have been spending lots of time together. She helps me with my algebra homework, and I've been corrupting her young soul with rock and roll music. Huh. She's really cool, but you and Brian won't stop complaining about each other. Oh, he's complaining about me? No, Dad, that's not what I meant. If you and Brian would just talk to each other, maybe you'd see you have a lot in common. See, now I gotta turn it up to 11. Brian is getting obliterated. Oh, no. Dad, you have to chill. Please chill, for my sake. I'm chill. I'm so chill. I'm like, stupidly chill. And once I prove once and for all that I'm clearly the better dad, I'll be so chill you could call me liquid nitrogen. I will destroy him. Aww. Dad! I spot the entrance to the midway. A perfect opportunity. <laughs> hey, Brian, check it out. Want to get a couple of games in? That sounds fun. Maybe a little friendly competition. No, we wanted to check out some clowns over there. Amanda, you're scared of clowns. Overruled. Aww. Ugh, fine, sure, let's play some games. But if we spent the whole night in there, I'm filing for emancipation. Oh, lighten up. I'll win you something nice. Hey. And I'll win you something nice too, Daisy. I'll win more nice things than Brian. Hey. I'd like to see you try. Brian and I glare at each other. <laughs> this is so dumb. This is so dumb. We've been at it for longer than I'd like to admit. Amanda and Daisy sigh heavily at, e at each new game Brian and I challenge each other to. Their arms overburdened with stuffed animal and t-shirts with rainbows airbrushed onto them. For every game I win, Brian seems to answer back. Aww. Dad, please, enough. Just one last game, honey. Oh. So, Sky and we're tied. What's the ultimate prize? I spud it from across the midway. We lock eyes. It swims absent-mindedly in a bowl of water. That goldfish will be mine. Amanda, sweetie, how about I win you a goldfish? Dad. If it'll get us out of here, sh Great! I look over at Brian. We don't say a word, but our locked eyes confirm it. The person who wins the goldfish wins the night. This is so dumb. Hey. <gasps> Looks like it's skee-ball. You any good? I do not know what that is, but I guess I'm about to find out. I am the best skee-ball player to ever grace this earth. Think you can handle me? Hey. Still willing to put up your weed whacker? Only if you're willing to part with that pole saw. <laughs> Lawn grooming equipment goes to the ski ball champ. We share an earnest shake. <laughs> oh, this is spectacular. Oh, it's that game. I know that game. Okay, so. Hmm. Okay, I think I see... Right, okay, so... Like that, I think. And then, if you want to get the hundreds, then you have to go... Yeah, okay, I see. Okay, fairly simple, actually. <laughs> the bell sounds and lights flash. It feels like things are moving in slow motion. The guy running the booth points at me. I turn to look at Brian, and his face is priceless. The attendant reaches up and dumps the goldfish into a plastic baggie. My hands shake as he passes it over to me. I have done it. I have finally done it. The fish is mine. The pole saw is mine. <laughs> Victory is mine. I have bested Brian. <laughs> you won. Fair and square. I hold the goldfish above my head, brandishing it aloft for the world to see. <laughs> Be cool. Be cool. I think better of my hubris and slowly lower the goldfish onto Amanda's hands. It was nothing. Amanda, what would you like to name your new friend? How about... Brian. It too, Amanda. <laughs> wanna go on the Ferris wheel next? Yeah, I wanna ride the Ferris wheel. Uh. <laughs> of course. 
I'll hang out and watch you guys. Still not a fan of carnival rides. I'd be happy to ride some rides with you kids. Two, one. I'm just kidding. I love carnival rides. I am the best at them. <laughs> oh, Lord. We traverse the fair and end up at the, at the relatively short line for the Ferris wheel. It doesn't seem like a very popular ride. Daisy and Amanda chat excitedly. I can feel Brian glaring at me. Maybe you profound moron, he's not glaring at you, but looking at you. And maybe he's doing it for another reason than just being a competitive dickbag. You moron! <laughs> it's a little bit frustrating when I, oblivious as I usually am, am somehow more perceptive than the actual character in the goddamn game. So, how'd you do on the trick final? Hmm. Way better than I thought I would. Those cosine problems still tripped me up, so I drew a cat instead of answering the questions, and my teacher gave me a point for effort. Wow, is high school really that easy? Hmm. Absolutely, yes. The School of Hard Knocks, though? That's another story. Amanda playfully punches Daisy on the arm. Welcome to the streets. Hmm. You check out that art book I gave you? Yeah, I love that section on female photographers. You have good taste. You know, I bet your photos will be in a book someday. Uh. Daisy, stop or I'll cry. They're too cute. Next, Amanda pushes me forward. Yeah. You first. I sit down in the carriage. And now you. Daisy pushes Brian into the carriage next to me. Before I can say anything, the ride operator closes the gate. Now wait just a sec. We're gonna go get some deep fried pickles. You two take this time to work out your differences. Oh. Hold on. Get along. Amanda and Daisy run off into the crowd. The ride starts moving. Good kids. Thank God for the children. <laughs> work this shit out, you morons. I sit in the Ferris wheel with my arms crossed, not talking to Brian. I don't even know what Amanda's talking about. Neither do I. Our carriage creeps up slowly upward. Ferris wheel's boring. Could this ride go any slower? Oh, is that too fast for you? That's not what I meant. How could this get any worse? Suddenly the ride jerks to a halt with us at the very top of the wheel. I can hear the faint yell of the ride operator down below. Sorry folks, ride stuck. Guess a raccoon must have stolen the key component to the motor. They're very crafty animals and are frequently attracted to shiny objects, so it makes sense that they'd pilfer something like that. Anyway, it'll be some time before we can get you all down. Settle in and get cozy. <laughs> well, and hey, no hand stuff while you're up there. Hand stuff? What's he referring to? <laughs> well, the... And no mouth stuff either. Okay, I know what mouth stuff is. I know what that is. Well, this is just great. I look down over the expanse of the carnival. I hate to admit it, but it's a pretty good view. I spot someone down at the food cart melting cheese onto a pile of steaming steak and peppers. Oh man, I'm so hungry. Why didn't we get the funnel cake first? My stomach rumbles. Oh, I know that sound. Brian reaches into his cargo shorts and pulled out, pulls out some fruit leather. Some what? Must be some American snack I don't know about, offering it to me. Cherry or mango? I don't want your stupid fruit leather. Brian opens one and starts eating it. Fine. My stomach growls again. God damn it, why didn't I take the fruit leather? We sit in silence as the crowd begins to form under us. A group of carnival workers attempt to restart the engine. I suddenly remember that I have a tiny book of word jumbles and a golf pencil in my pocket. I pull them out and start working on a fresh page, determined not to look at Brian. Listen, chat, when they say hand stuff, I can think of at least four or five different things that that could mean. The trouble isn't that I don't know what hand stuff is, the trouble is that I know too many things that hand stuff could be. So, you know, <laughs> hey, I always bring a puzzle book with me too. Brian pulls out a small book of crossword puzzles and a pen. Are you kidding me? I throw my book of word jumbles off the side of the Ferris wheel in a fit of rage. What the hell, you stupid, ridiculous moron? Would you please have some introspection with yourself, you jackass? Uh, I don't like who my character is around Brian, I have to say. He's a bit of a dick. Uh -huh. Oh, bet we could find it when we get off this thing. Here, you can do my crosswords. Brian holds his book and pen out to me with a smile. Absolutely not. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ, me. 
Why are you like that? Me? You moron. Me? <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, I definitely don't like the person my character becomes in this in this particular route. Hopefully, though, we're about to resolve it. Why do you hate me so much? Hate you? Why do you think you're better than me? Oh. What? I don't think I'm better than you. Oh, okay, so you were just offering me fruit snacks and a crossword out of the kindness of your heart? Yes, me! That's what nice people do, you idiot! Oh. Well, uh, yes? A likely story. All you do is brag about your smart kid and your landscaping and your stupid weed whacker. I'm sick of it. Oh. And all you do is one-up me every chance you get. The only thing I wouldn't win is a one-upping other people competition because you would win that because that's what you do. I don't know. I... I don't do it on purpose. Wait, what? You're messing with me, right? No. But... I don't think I'm better than you. At all. You and your daughter are amazing. I thought we were competing just for fun at first, but the more they started doing it, the more it felt like... You must hate me. And the more we did it, the more I wanted to impress you. There were times when I did want to beat you, Sky, but all I really wanted was for you to like me. Yeah, jeez, wow, who could have seen that coming? Didn't see that coming from ten miles away. Me? You moron? You profound idiot? Oh my god, I feel like such an ass. Yeah, be honest with yourself. No, don't be an asshole. Why would you do that? <laughs> Brian, I'm so sorry. This whole time... It's also clear now. This is what is this what Amanda was trying to tell me? Oh gee, I wonder. Maybe that was what she was trying to tell you when she was telling you that straight up to your face in those exact words. Oh my god. I just been projecting my own insecurities onto you. Everything about you makes me feel inadequate. I think I was just trying to tear you down to compensate for my old old self low self-esteem. I feel like a total idiot. If I'm being totally honest, I think that you're really cool and strong and a good dad and you really maybe don't go there just yet. Yeah, he was about to say hot. <laughs> yeah, it's, anyway, I have I have a lot of respect for you, Brian. I'm sorry I got so weird and jealous. I I think if you're willing to forgive me, we could probably be good friends. <laughs> we sit in silence for a second. Can we start over? What do you mean? From the beginning. Brian holds out his hand. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brian. I take his hand and shake it vigorously. Hey, Brian, I'm Sky. It's really nice to meet you. Great shirt. Thanks, Guyan. Brian and I look at each other. We both share a smirk over this silly little game, but it feels good to be on the same side for once. All right, folks, thanks for being patient. Turns out the raccoon didn't steal the part, was the boys instead still rummaging around in the inner workings of the engine. We formed a wary yet mutually beneficial truce. The carriage starts moving, and we find ourselves down on dry land in no time. Good grief. <laughs> Eef. My character's a moron. <laughs> Brian and I wander around for a bit, looking for Daisy and Amanda. You know, getting stuck on that Ferris wheel could have been a lot worse. I'm glad we worked things out. Hey. Me too, buddy. Aww. Now that's over with. We can both go home to quietly enjoy our evenings. Agreed. Dad! Hey. Amanda and Daisy run up to us. I think you kids will be fine. Pleased to find that Brian and I have worked out our diff- <gasps> Dad, that's great and all, but Brian's in trouble. But Brian's right- The fish, Brian! What? Ah. Daisy and I got in the log flume, and when we were going down the hill, Brian just flew right out of the log, and now he's hanging on some pipe on the ride. We have to save him. But Brian's- The fish! Brian, the fish! Oh, right. Come on! We spinned over to the log flume, spotting Brian, the fish, stuck up in the rafters of the ride. We'll get you down, little buddy. Oh. We have to get Brian before the fair closes, so who knows what'll happen to him. But the fair closes in ten minutes. I guess we need to hustle then. What's the plan? Well, one ride around the track lasts 90 seconds. Brian's hanging from a pipe right above the drop, so you'll have a window of about, of about ten seconds to grab him. Wow, did you just do all that math in your head? That's really impressive. I... I just count it. It's not that impre... Mm. I'm so proud of you, honey. Okay. <laughs> that rafter is pretty high up. How are we going to reach him? We all think for a second. Uh -huh. I've got it. 
Brian runs over to the midway, to the last game we played, and snacks the pole from the game attendant that they used to grab the stuffed animals. I think this'll do the trick. Amanda presses two ticket stubs into my hand. Here, these are our last two tickets. Brian's fate is in your hands now. Uh, there's no time. Come on. Brian leads me by the hand, very nice, to the entrance of the log flume, getting there just in the nick of time. Looks like you guys are the last ones. We take our seats on the slippery vinyl. The ride operator pulls the bar down over our laps. You ready for this? The log starts drifting down the fake river. Unnaturally blue water sloshes over the riot sides, soaking my shoes. This is gross. You know how earlier I said it that was the best at carnival rides? The ride jerks forward and I let out a small yelp. <laughs> that might have been an embellishment. Our riggedy log makes the slow climb up the track for the most grueling minute of my life. Oh. I see him! Hanging from the rafters just before the drop is our beloved Brian. The fish, not the guy. You ready? I don't think I can reach it from where I'm sitting. It's all you, buddy. Brian pressures the fishing pole, fishing pole into my hand. Oh god, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> hey, I believe in you. I gulp. I... I can do this. Match that fish. Match that fish. Okay. Well, okay then. <laughs> With the precision only attainable from playing midway games at a, comp at a competitive level, I hook the baggie that contains Brian the fish and place it onto my lap. I did it. I grasp the bag firmly. He'll be nice and safe during the dr Oh god, the drop! I momentarily forgot there was a drop! It's a big drop! <laughs> it's coming up real fast! Oh man, it's a big drop! Uh, so when I told you I had sort of over-exaggerated my proficiency at carnival rides, it turns out I had under-exaggerated just how bad I am with them. I am utterly and completely terrified of carnival rides. Brian looks over to me and takes my hand in his. I'm right here. We can do this. He gives my hand a squeeze as our log tips over the edge and flies down the drop. <laughs> uh, honestly. A wall of water rains down on us. I realize I have my eyes squeezed shut and open them to find Brian still holding my hand. He smiles at me. That wasn't so bad. Told you we'd make it. <laughs> Brian and I walk off. I, by the way, I just realized I did the completely wrong thing when it came to catching that fish. Oh well. Brian and I walk off the ride and approach Daisy and Amanda. I hand the baggie to Amanda. Whoa. Brian. Uh. Hey. Huh. No, the fish. Oh. Hmm. Uh. <laughs> I mean, hey, thanks for saving the fish. Don't thank me. That was all your dad. Aw, oh, shucks. It was a team effort. Yeah. yeah, you all used your special skills to get him back. Brian got the pole, Daisy did the math, you got the fish. Mm. I didn't get to do anything cool. Well, honey, I'm sure you... Hey, what were you guys doing up there? That was totally dangerous! <laughs> Amanda steps in front of all of us and plants her feet. Hey. Listen, dude, it might have been totally dangerous, but I'll have you know that we triumphed over more than just your silly rules today. We overcame adversity through teamwork, friendship, and love. We banded together to achieve a common goal, and here we stand, stronger than the sum of our parts, and for you to- I actually don't care. The fair's closing. Just get out of here. The ride operator wanders off. <laughs> you really are a sparkling conversationalist. We join the crowd of Fairgo as slowly, slowly ambling back to the parking lot. <laughs> you kids want to stick around for the fireworks? Ugh, do we have to? I have never seen a child less enthusiastic about fireworks. Yeah, can we just go home? We've been hauling all these prizes around for hours and my back is killing me. You kids run on ahead. We'll catch up with you later tonight. Amanda and Daisy skip along. We'll probably find them later curled up on my couch and watching long haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers. Brian and I sit down on a bench a little further away from the rest of the crowd, who've all gathered to watch the fireworks. Hey. Hell of a day, huh? You can say that again. Ah. Hell of a day, huh? Ah, dad joke. This is the one time I will let you out-dad me. <laughs> ah, I'll take it. I breathe in the cool night air as the first firework launches and explodes in the sky over the fair. I'm glad we talked about all that stuff. Me too. It's good to have a friend like you, Brian. The fireworks launch into a full swing, bursting around us in a rainbow of reds, blues, and whites. There's one more thing I have to admit, though. What's that? I don't know anything about fishing. Brian bursts out laughing. 
Oh, buddy. I know. What? You knew the whole time. I mean, you weren't exactly subtle about it. I can feel myself blushing. He laughs again. It's okay. It was cute. If you're interested, maybe I could teach you sometime. That's what friends do, right? Ah. The laughter dies down and we watch the fireworks a little longer. I can tell he wants to say something, but he's having trouble getting it out. You know, it's kind of funny. What is? We're not fighting anymore, but I still feel like we left some stuff uh, unresolved. Oh, lawn mowing is still happening. We're cool now, but don't think I forgot about that. Brian laughs. No, oh, it's not that. Don't you feel like there's maybe something else here? Or is it just me? Looking at Brian, his smile illuminated by the cracking embers falling through the night sky, I suddenly understand what he's talking about. Oh, gee, yeah, it only took you like a million years to get there, idiot. Oh. This whole time with emotions running so high, I realize what I've been really been feeling. What I thought was jealousy was actually... It's not just you. Brian inches towards me. <laughs> you know, it's hard paying attention to the fireworks when you're right here. He and I lean in and our lips touch. He places one hand on my shoulder, then another at the base of my neck, gently pulling me closer to him in a warm embrace. I feel... safe. Brian pulls away from me for a moment and smiles. I guess now we get to compete over who's better at kissing. Brian stifles a laugh and pulls me in for another. I'll accept that challenge. Aww. Sure enough, when I get home, Amanda and Daisy are passed out on the sofa, surrounded by giant stuffed animals. Amanda snoring drowns out the paranormal ice road ghost, uh, paranormal ice road truckers still playing on TV. I turn everything off and throw a couple of blankets over the kids before heading to bed myself. So I wonder if Mary is going to have different great date. is going to have different uh college advice for Amanda in this one. Bruh. I swear, if you two are planning another parent trap... Relax, Dad. We already won the game. We're just having a friendly chat. Tell me more about college. Slow down, kiddo. You're not even in middle school yet. But I want to go to class with my PJs now. <laughs> I mean, nothing's stopping you. Hmm. But Daisy, I hear ya. I know you're stoked in college and skipping grades and taking over the world with science, but you gotta enjoy being a kid first. Growing up is weird and scary, and eventually you'll be able to rent a car, but you gotta get through middle school in one piece first. You know how you wish you were going to college? I wish I was in fifth grade. I want recess and snack time back. Cherish it while it lasts, girl. You got a big future ahead of you, but I don't want you to growing up too fast on us, all right? All right. Thanks, Amanda. I ease away slowly. Amanda seems like she has the handle on the situation. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat on our back porch step. The sun is setting and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Okay, here comes the part that makes me cry again. <laughs> I glance over to the back of the yard where Brian is sitting on a bench beneath our cherry blossom tree. By the way, how cheesy is it to have a goddamn cherry blossom tree at the big romance scene at the end? I'll leave you to it. Me and the Emma's are gonna go get ice cream. Love you, pops. Amanda runs off to join her friends. I take a seat next to Brian as the last guests make their way out of the party. <laughs> nice job. Couldn't have thrown a better party myself. I smile. So are we doing, like, opposite competition now? <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna compliment each other relentlessly. I bet you could do more push-ups than me. I bet you're better with computers than I am. I bet you could trim a tree faster than I could. 
I bet you could de-ice a sidewalk more thoroughly than me. I like this a lot better. Brian blushes. I nestle myself into the soft space between Brian's shoulder and chest. No matter how many times he washes that shirt, I bet he'll never get the smell of campfire out of it. Not that I mind. <laughs> Got a long summer coming. Interested in some more fishing trips with me, Daisy and Amanda? As long as you'll save me again if I fall into the water, I'd be happy to. Gotta sneak in as much father and daughter time as possible before Amanda heads out. Also, be careful, she's probably gonna try and steal your dog and take him away with her to college. I also get the feeling Daisy might try and stow away in her suitcase, so watch out for that. The sunset casts a pink glow over everything, and a quiet calm seems to descend upon my backyard. It reminds me of the lake. I'm glad we're not rivals anymore. Me too. Although I don't think I've ever been more productive than I was when I was trying to one-up you. Ha! Uh -huh. ah, maybe a little friendly competition is what we both needed. I sigh and nuzzle against Brian a little harder. I am the cuddle champion. Uh -huh. We'll see about that. Sappy, sappy, sappy. Yeah, so that route clearly had a more... Like, it, ha it had a different intentionality than the other ones. Because what's interesting is, like, the other routes we've dealt with so far with Damien and Robert have been primarily about Damien and Robert's neuroses, like, their problems. And how, you know, the contact with the main character helps them out with that and sort of uh, and makes them realize things and helps them move on a little bit with their character. Whereas this route is all about the main character, really. And, like, so some of the issues that, that are being written into them. And that's why it feels a little different, because you're being... In this version, the other two... The story does a great job of not making... Having the main character be too characterized. But because in this particular route, the main character's character, as it were, is the main thing... You get a much different feeling. Like, you, you get the feeling of, oh, I'm not really playing myself so much as I'm playing a version of a character who I happen to have designed. Which is interesting. Like, it's not bad at all. It's just different from the other routes in the game, which is interesting. my back there. Is that Tyson Hesse? I feel like I recognize the art style. I may be wrong. That's a good illustration, though. Look at how... This is something that's that's uh, compositionally quite clever. See how the mountains and the trees and... Like, the whole image, it creates this frame that, so all the nature is kind of framing Brian. And then you have the fish, which is being framed within the the, the flow of the water there on its own. Which is it's just a good way to divide the image up between two, um, like, between two main subjects. While keeping them both in focus. Which is, like, it's a good way to do it. And you also got the uh, fishing line, which connects them, which is good. Compositionally, this is just a really good little illustration. I've definitely seen that art style somewhere before. Okay. Welcome. You've got dads. Indeed. So, we've got Craig, Matt, Hugo, and Joseph to go. And we've got, well, mm, actually, we've got only about 10 minutes left to go, and then we'll have been live for three hours. So it's either gonna be going a little over time or ending it now. 
And I know every single one of you is going to want me to keep going, but I feel like having ended, like having finished the Brian route, that's a really natural place to stop for now. And then on next Saturday, we can get started on one of the four remaining ones. Because it feels awkward to start one now and then just leave it for a week before we can come back to it. So, eh. This is both convenient and inconvenient at the same time, which is a little bit. But yeah, I think I'm going to cut it here. And we'll pick this up on Saturday. Um, where we'll do one of the other... <clears throat> well, do. <laughs> where we'll deal with one of the other routes. So, thank you all very much for watching, as usual. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll be back on Saturday, same time, to start in on one of the other dads. Maybe Joseph or something. We've got to get him out of the way at some point, rather than ending on him. Uh, uh, yeah, so have a really nice night, everybody. And um, I'll see you on Wednesday for Hollow Night, if anyone's interested in that. And on Saturday for more Dream Daddy. Ah. <sighs>